Time Warner Cable and Robert Warren Mobile Television Productions presents the St. Lawrence Holmes High School Football Game of the Week. Exclusively on Time Warner Cable. Tonight, another Cap 7 game between the Broughton Capitals and the Wake Forest Roseville Cougars. And it's brought to you by St. Lawrence Holmes. Thoughtfully designed, carefully crafted. Also by GMC. Engineered to the highest standard, professional grade. And by Time Warner Cable, the power of you. From a wet, rain-soaked Trentini Stadium, home of the Wake Forest Roseville High School Cougars, it's high school football on a Friday night. And good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Mayer, along with Paul Doherty. And Paul, tonight uh, we've got, of course, the week number eight of the high school football season. After tonight, only four more weeks to go. Every week is important. Every week is important, and that's why they're going to get this one in. You mentioned the rain-soaked field. We'll see it, uh, whether or not the conditions on the field get a little tougher tonight. But uh, postponing is really not an option as you get into this conference season. You've got just too many games to play, and you don't want to put your varsity squads at a disadvantage if you can help it. But it's going to be a great ball game tonight as Broughton comes calling here on homecoming here at Wake Forest Roseville. A lot of uh, white jerseys here tonight. We see the Broughton Capitals now coming out onto the field. Uh, the uh, Wake Forest Roseville Cougars will be coming out shortly. Homecoming here, always a very, very special time, uh, especially for the Cougars. And their defensive unit is going to try to pull out a homecoming victory here tonight against the Broughton Capitals. Absolutely. Wake Forest offense is really starting to put things together. Uh, last couple of games, they scored over 30 points per game, but their defense has been the thing they've built around, 13 points per game, and they're hoping for another great effort tonight from their defense. And you said the offensive line, uh, Young at the beginning of the season now has uh, gotten their lumps out and really been playing well uh, in the last couple of games, a really balanced offensive attack for Wake Forest. Absolutely, and of course, a couple weeks ago, a high-flying, pass-oriented offense in Broughton goes to Millbrook, and they run the ball for 175 <laughs> yards, so we don't know what we're going to see tonight uh, on a rain-slicked field, but uh, I think both teams are very well balanced with the uh, pass and the run, both with uh, good defenses, although Broughton scoring about 28 points per game, but giving up close to 28 points a game. So they're going to have to put together a complete game if they're going to steal one on the road here at Wake Forest. Yep. So it's like a big game here tonight. A winner is sitting pretty in the con in the uh, Cap 7 Conference up there atop the lead. Uh, the loser, well, they're going to have to come back again next week against another tough competition. So let's go look at our pregame. We're going to come back in just a moment, take a look at our keys to the game, brought to you by St. Lawrence Holmes, and also the kickoff. That's just moments away when we return. It's the St. Lawrence Holmes High School Football Game of the Week, exclusively on Time Warner Cable, and we'll be right back. Football Game of the Week, exclusively on Time Warner Cable, and both teams coming out here tonight at the same time on our Time Warner High School Game of the Week, every Friday night right here. Uh, Time Warner Cable, Channel 24. Greg Mayer along with Paul Doherty. You see a lot of umbrellas out there down below as it is wet. It is rainy. It's been raining off and on all day today. And then we got a good rain just moments before uh, the start of tonight's high school football game. So both teams are out onto the field. We're going to have our kickoff here in just a moment. But first, our keys to the game brought to you by St. Lawrence Homes. When you're thinking of keys to your new home, think of St. Lawrence Homes. Homes that are thoughtfully designed and carefully crafted. Our keys to the game, first for the Broughton County. Capitals, they are the visiting team here tonight. Talk with Coach Martin Paul before uh, this game. Obviously, he feels tonight he can throw in this uh, kind of weather. I think one of the keys that I'm just going to add in right away, of course, is turnovers and try to limit the turnovers. You're going to have some here tonight. The ball is going to be awfully slippery. Uh, try to limit those turnovers. Execute. Play our game for all four quarters. And also the kicking game can be key here tonight. Broughton has a great extra point, you know, a great field goal kicker, Jeremy Shelley. Uh, and so that will be a key here tonight if he can get the footing to get that ball up in the air. Extra points will be a key here tonight. Now for Wake Forest Roseville, you have their keys to the game. Well, for Wake Forest, it's very simple. They had a lot of turnovers at the beginning of the year. They only had one last week, and they've got to continue that trend. They've got to get good field position tonight and win in the kicking game. And they've got to control the clock, keep that Broughton offense off the field. Field, and here we go. And it will be kicked away. Caleb Epps, number four, is going to kick it away. It is dropped. Now falling on it at about the 12. 
is uh, a Broughton player who brings it up across the 20 to about the 22 yard line and that will be a number 27 for Broughton who brought that ball back Mike Bauza a 5A junior 165 pounder so here comes the Broughton defense of course led by their quarterback uh, Josh Price number six uh, and then of course in the backfield we will see uh, their uh, talented uh, running back number 22 Spencer Terry and uh, their wideouts will be Lamar Scott Sedaris Wright Torres Sanders and Lee Brown that's look at your wide receivers here they come up to the uh, line of scrimmage first down and 10 operating at their own 22 yard line Price and the Caps dressed in all white with the purple trim on first down they'll send right in motion and they will hand off to him in the backfield was uh, pressure there by number 10 Brian Phillips and they're able to pull right out of bounds at about the 25 yard line the rest of the offensive line for Brutton Kendall Giles Joe Watson, Jordan Jernigan, Andy Leonard, and Will Black. That's a look at your uh, starting lineup here for the uh, Broughton Capitals. Wake Forest Roseville, of course, their defense led by number 25, Taylor Fisher, has been fantastic all season. And out there tonight, I saw playing with a big uh, cast on his right hand. And he will line up as a uh, corner or outside linebacker. There he is right there, number 25, Taylor Fisher, was our player of the game uh, when we were here last. So a gain of about three, call it second down and seven. And here's a run by Terry, and not much there as he is wrapped up and hauled down. Number 90, Travis Jones, the defensive end, 6'2", 220, coming in to make that stop. One of the things we saw e uh, Wake Forest Roseville do against East Wake at the beginning of the year is defensively stay with their keys, keys and stay with their assignments. They're good, that defense is going to play very disciplined football, and that's going to be important as they approach this spread offense tonight. Spencer Terry, of course, has been terrific all year, and they're trying to establish him here on third down. So third down and seven for Price, standing at his own 16, and he will throw it out here in the flat, catching it at the, uh, well, actually, no, he did not catch it. It was incomplete. Intended for uh, number 25, that being Lee Brown, a senior 5'10", 175. So it'll be a third down and about 13 to go. And uh, Broughton will have to punt. Spencer Terry is their punter. He stands at his own seven-yard line. And uh, waiting back. We'll see what happens here. The punt. Oh, it's high and short. Almost uh, blocked. This one, though, shanked and actually bounces at the 20 and will roll out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. You mentioned Taylor Fisher wow. just a second ago. He gets in and is able to disrupt that just a little bit. I'm not sure he blocked it, but he was able to disrupt the flow there. And uh, Broughton with a tough, tough situation there. So Wake Forest, one of their keys, immediately, you know, that field position battle and trying to win that and uh, doing a good job here as they're going to have terrific field position. It looks like they'll be starting in their own, in the red zone. So first down and 10, quarterback Brandon Davison will hand off. This is, uh, looks like Robert Kosenke, who will hammer off the left side of that line and get down inside the five, down to about the uh, four-yard line. Number 40, Robert Kosenke, a 5'8", 165-pound junior. And uh, slow to get up is a Broughton Capital player. And it looks like we will have a... Uh, a stop here, a stoppage of play for an injury timeout. And it looks like uh, number 12, Taylor Kiker, is going to walk off the field. If we sound a little bit uh, slow to react here, we're having a little bit of trouble, uh, the two of us, uh, seeing the field at all times here from our perch at the top of the press box. But uh, we're going to get our act together here and uh, give Wade Forest another look as they are operating second down and one to go in just the first few seconds of this game. And this will be a handoff. This looks like Kramer trying to power off the right side of that line. Still on his feet. Now he's finally going to be pushed back. It looks like they might have given him forward progress down to about the two-yard line. So not sure if it's still raining on the field. Just trying to uh, take a look out there and make sure just to see if it is raining. It did rain a lot before tonight's game. Here's the replay. Yeah, we talked with head coach Earl Smith during the week. He's very, very proud of the way his offensive unit has uh, developed. Brandon Davis with the handoff that time to Jordan Kramer. So here's a uh, 
third down situation. Actually, first down and goal, excuse me, and rolling into the end zone for a touchdown. Is uh, Brandon Davis or... I believe Brandon Davis kept this one himself and ran it in from about two yards out. So a touchdown and coming in to attempt the extra point is Caleb Epps and Wake Forest Roseville will start out quickly here in this uh, ball game off the uh, bad punt. So special teams a key already as we talked about that in the pregame show. Our keys to the game special teams and a bad punt. And uh, Wake Forest Roseville goes in from 13 yards out. Here's the extra point attempt and he shanked it to the left. So Caleb Epps is going to miss that extra point attempt, but Wake Forest is going to get the quick lead here, six to nothing. You saw the uh, students out there a second ago. It's homecoming here at Wake Forest, and uh, really kind of an ugly day here. Early in the fall, rain all day long. The field looking a little bit sloppy, and hopefully it'll hold up as the night goes by. But uh, good crowd here on hand to cheer on their Cougars as Brandon Davis punches it in for a touchdown. Better look at it there. And uh, homecoming so far working out pretty well here at Wake Forest, but Broughton will have their say in a second as the teams get back out onto the field and Broughton gets set to kick it off. As you can see, the rain drops on our camera uh, high above the press box. And uh, there's the fans dressed up down below showing their spirit here. They are here in attendance and cheering on the Wake Forest Roseville Cougars. They will always remember homecoming as seniors. They are not letting the rain dampen their spirits. Epps will boot this one away. And this one uh, goes through the hands of uh, Bauza. It is picked up at about the two and running this one up across the 15 to about the 20 and finally pushed out of bounds there is uh, number 30, uh, that is Lamar Scott. So that'll be first down and 10 for Broughton going back the other way. And we'd like to thank, of course, uh, our fine sponsors on the broadcast. And, of course, St. Lawrence Holmes is a, a fine sponsor on the broadcast. St. Lawrence Holmes uh, being a proud supporter of high school sports and athletics in Wake County. And they provide homes that are thoughtfully designed and carefully crafted. We'd like to thank St. Lawrence Holmes for being a fine sponsor of uh, tonight's high school football game uh, here on Time Warner Cable. First down in 10. Price will air it out here on the side to Brown, and there is nothing there for 25. Lee Brown as a screen pass was uh, sniffed out there by number 10, Brian Phillips, a linebacker. He is a junior, 6 foot 190 pounds. And we talked about the defense staying with their assignments. It's the second time we've seen Brian Phillips come right up his lane and uh, cut off that that little shot to the left, Sedaris right on the ground a little while ago, getting cut off, and that time a little swing pass going nowhere for Lee Brown. So Spencer Terry in the backfield, a loss of four. Call it second down and 14. Price back to pass, looking, and will throw over here in the flat, and nobody there. Looked like he was going to try to hit Spencer Terry. Taylor Fisher was uh, defending on the play along with uh, number 90, Travis Jones. So it's now third down and 14, and... You know, Broughton throwing downfield a lot, but uh, tonight they haven't thrown downfield at all. They've been throwing more screens and uh, little dump-offs. Well, a couple of weeks ago we saw him go right down the field uh, with the air attack against Millbrook. Uh, missed a couple of those, immediately went to the ground attack and didn't really have to turn uh, away from that strategy. They've tried to get the run established, but here they're in a definite throwing situation. Third down and long. Back to pass goes Price. He will air it out. It is caught by Wright, I believe, and he is pushed out of bounds, defended there nicely by number 15, Burton White, the corner. And so he picks up uh, about eight yards, call it third down now, and six. Well, head coach Chris Martin told us, hey, we can throw the ball in this weather. Our offensive players know where they're going on these routes. The defenders may get stuck uh, in the mud and may have a little trouble with their footing. So let's, let's go aggressively to the air. But it's going to be fourth down now, and uh, Broughton is forced to punt it. And punting this one away is Terry. This one's a better one. It bounces just in front of a Broughton Capital player and will roll an extra 17 yards down to about the 27-yard line. So a little more respectable uh, on that punt and uh, a little deeper field position here for Wake Forest Roseville. The Cougars will start out first down in 10, second drive start of the evening at their own 26-yard line. 
leading by the score of 6 nothing. And Wake Forest really had it easy on offense a minute ago as he started out their first drive inside the red zone. Here they're going to have to go just a little bit farther. Let's see what happens as Wake Forest comes out. Max now in the divide. And it will be a run off that right side. And uh, picking up some good yardage up across the 30, maybe to the 31-yard line. Denzel Reyna with the carry. He's going to pick up about five yards. And uh, we saw him come in to the East Wake game as a starter for the first time. So we take another look at it here. Denzel Reyna finding some space and running towards daylight and back at action. Gain of about uh, four, call it second down and six. They'll run the big man through. That's uh, Jordan Kramer, and he piles across the 35 up to about the 38-yard line where he will be close to a Wake Forest Roseville first down. Chains are already moving, so he's got that first down. And Wake Forest Roseville leading 6-0 with the ball and now a first down. So they have faced a tough non-conference schedule has Earl Smith's uh, ball club. First down and 10 operating at the uh, 32. And this will be a handoff again. Jordan Kramer up across the 40 to about the 41-yard uh, line. They face teams like Riverside and East Wake, Southern Durham and Fuquay Verena. And all four teams are combined 17 and 8. Their last two wins came over Emlo and Nightdale. And of course they are combined 4 and 8. But Emlo defeated Riverside. And we all know who Riverside beat. They beat Garner. Uh, but uh, Wake Forest Roseville has scored 74 points and allowed only uh, 16 in those two wins over Enlow and uh, Nightdale. Here's another run. This is a run off the right side for short yardage uh, by Jordan Kramer. So it'll be third down and five. But the uh, defense has played well and the offensive line has also improved over these uh, last few weeks. They've cut down in their turnovers, which saw them lose close games uh, to Riverside and also East Wake early on in the season. Third down, call it about five for Brandon Davis and his Cougars. He will send a man in motion and it will hand off up the middle. And this is Kramer, and he's got first down yardage and more all the way down inside the 40 to about the 37-yard line. Sometimes in the wing tee, there's a lot, a lot of reliance on that deception. You run left to right quite a bit, but here, Wake Forest able to go to the power attack and just give it to their big fullback, Jordan Kramer, who breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage, finds some room to run to his left, and once again picks up a first down for the Cougars. Good block downfield by Courtney Johnson, the senior wide receiver, and quickly back to action. Here's Jordan Kramer running right side, trying to find his uh, hole there to run through, and he picks up a few yards, gets up across. Uh, are down inside the 35, down to about the 34. So a pickup of about uh, four yards, Colin. Second down and six. In talking with head coach Earl Smith, he said, hey, the passing attack is starting to come along here at Wake Forest. But in a difficult field uh, situation with the uh, rain falling all day and Broughton having trouble with that north-south running attack of Jordan Kramer, hey, why not stick to what's working here and uh, continue on with this power attack? Denzel Rayner running right side, and he's got a first down inside the 30 down to about the 26-yard line. There's some good blocking by the offensive lineman up front. And they pick up another first down. Here's the run. And once again, a little fake to Kramer, and then a handoff to Denzel Reyna. He's going to wait for that to develop and follow his blockers. With Kasanke out there uh, right. making a block. And Kyle yeah. Abishire, too, a uh, guard pulling from that left guard spot. And he was showed some patience there, following and looking for that block. Here's Kasanke coming in to run. Kasanke, oh, he almost broke it. Finally brought down by number 30, Lamar Scott, or else he would have gone for another six. But Wake Forest Roseville moving the football and uh, picking up uh, what uh, is another first down as they get down inside the 20, down to about the 16-yard line, and a timeout on the field. Wake Forest leading by the score of six to nothing. And you see the sidelines there, everybody dressed up in their uh, rain wear is uh, <laughs> it's been a wet night here but the Cougars uh, tonight coach Smith 
saying that this, uh, as you said before, Paul, in the preseason uh, or the pregame, that this midseason improvement is as good or better than any team that he has coached. Uh, he has seen a lot of improvement, especially from the uh, offensive line. So uh, they are really, and we're seeing that right now <laughs> with the way that they're moving the ball uh, down the field. And Wake Forest teams are really famous for putting things together late in the season and really coming on strong in the cap seven. Well, if you don't have Time Warner Cable, we invite you to look at the all the best packages starting as low as $99.95 a month. All the best packages, including cable, roadrunner, and digital phone. And Time Warner Cable will let you choose the package that's right for you. $99.95 includes standard cable, roadrunner, light, and digital phone unlimited. And that available, of course, from Time Warner Cable, the power of you. First down and 10. And this will be a run off that left side. This is Kosanke, Cal cutting it back. 10, 5, touchdown. Wake Forest, Roseville, and number 40, Robert Kosanke. As I said, I was kind of looking forward to seeing Brandon Davis' development as a passer for this offense, but uh, no need so far as they've been able to keep it on the ground and mix it up. Uh, Jordan Kramer and uh, Robert Kisanke, Denzel Reyna getting uh, plenty of action here on the first two drives, and that time Kisanke punching it in, and they're going to give Caleb Epps, I guess, another chance at it, or will they go for two here? Looks like they're going to set up and go for two. Brandon Davis under center underneath the center and he will send a man in motion and it will be Kosanke running that left side and he will not get in. Looking for a hole, had a blocker out in front of him there, Courtney Johnson, but uh, good defensive play there. Uh, number 40 was in there, Tim Justice along with uh, Rayvon Stanback, a transfer defensive lineman. So with 4.26 to go here in the first quarter on the St. Lawrence Holmes game of the week, Wake Forest Roseville leads by the score of 12 to nothing. And here's the touchdown run. And once again, Kasanke's going to follow his blocker, and then he'll cut it back up the field. And Broughton's uh, defense just doesn't have the answer yet uh, for Wake Forest's ground attack. Perhaps uh, the change in the way that the teams prepare pre-game. They're not able to get out onto the field as normal, and they were out uh, working out on the baseball field instead in kind of a steady rain and uh, cold temperatures starting to creep in, and maybe Broaden has started off just a little bit cold. Wake Forest, of course, benefiting from a bigger crowd here at homecoming, and maybe just a little more pumped up, but Broughton certainly is uh, going to come right back here as, as uh, Wake Forest kicks it off. Now, we've seen a, we saw a lot of speed uh, for Broughton against uh, Millbrook and that heavy slow pace of this game in the rain has slowed down their speed, but there's speed right there, 40, 45, midfield, 45, 40, and finally pushed out of bounds, and you see all the water splash up on the tackles. Richard Cotton brings down number 25, Lee Brown, but a nice run back by Lee Brown as he caught that ball on the fly held on to it and uh, ran upfield and maybe that's the momentum that the Caps need. Well, that's a way to fire up your teammates. That's make a big play on special teams. And Lee Brown really doing it himself there. Finding a couple of blocks, but looking over his options, making a couple of nice cuts on what could have been a tough uh, field tonight and uh, kind of splashes down at the end of that one. But uh, Broughton with very good field position here. All right, Josh Price brings his team up the line of scrimmage in shotgun formation. First down in 10 at the Wake Forest Roseville 35. Handoff, Terry hitting in the backfield. Oh, he's brought down. No gain on the play. Boy, the big defensive ends for Wake Forest Roseville are playing tough tonight. Travis Jones and Albert Rumsey both of, are on 220, 230 pounds in there to make the stop. And uh, that's the that's the perfect antidote for a little bit of momentum is get your uh, get your defensive line to surge in. Albert Rumsey leading the charge and cutting Broughton down in the backfield. And Broughton has to do better on first down. They've gone uh, successive first downs have lost three or four yards. That was a loss of uh, five. Call it for second down now and 15. Price looking to get another wide receiver over here in motion, and he will hand off. No, he will sprint to the right. He will throw downfield, and this one is incomplete. Intended downfield there for Lamar Scott, covered nicely there by Wake Forest's uh, Burton White, and so it's now third down and 
15, and this has been the story so far, Paul, for Brunton. Long third down situations, and their their defense just has, or offense hasn't just been able to click. That's right. They got that man-to-man -man coverage down the field, and a pretty good throw. Lamar Scott not able to hook up that time. And you're right. It brings up a third down and long for Broughton. At the 39-yard line of Wake Forest Roseville. Sends Sedaris right in motion. Got to get the ball in his hands. They fake. Drop back to pass. He will throw on the fly to Sedaris right. Got it at the 30. First down all the way to the 21, where he's finally upended there. But that's the play you need if you're brought and get the ball in the hands of number one. Well, a couple of times tonight already they've thrown in the flat, but it's been behind the line of scrimmage. This time able to lead uh, Sedaris right, and he's uh, about five yards down the field, maybe even maybe even more than that, before he even catches that ball. He's got a little bit of a head of steam, and that's the first down. I think the first first down for yep. Broughton tonight. You're right. And that was a beautifully thrown ball there by Josh Price. First down in 10. Now at the 22-yard uh, line of Wake Forest Roseville. A new set of downs for the Caps, trailing 12 nothing, And it will be a fake handoff, and he will air it out. He throws to the end zone. It is, oh, incomplete, and a flag now flies down as the pass was intended for Lee Brown. Covering on the play was uh, number uh, seven, Richard Cotton, and uh, they might have gotten him for interference. We'll see who this is against. It's going to be against Broughton for offensive pass interference. You know, I was, uh, <laughs> you know my track record is on guessing officials' I do. calls, but uh, I was going to well say, well that's right. Perfect. This pass a little underthrown. The Broughton, I mean, the uh, Wake Forest defender had position, and you didn't see it on that replay, but there's a little bit of a push-off, I think, and that's... Uh, came before that. That uh, came before that, exactly right, and that's not going to help Broughton in this situation, no. but at least Broughton is beginning to uh, look down the field, and uh, once again... You know, you can't see it. Uh, it happens just before they come. We come to that that angle, but uh, without Not that little much help, of an uh, advantage that, there on that push. <laughs> that's, <off>. right. <laughs> that's right. But uh, Lee Brown at least had a chance at it. But uh, so this is a 15-yard penalty, and so it's going to be first down and 25 from the 37-yard uh, line. So what was once the 22 is now the 37. So Broughton backing up again. So first down plays that have hurt them here tonight so far in this first quarter. We've got just over three minutes to go here in the first uh, first quarter. They'll send a man in motion and they will hand off to uh, Spencer Terry, 40-35 and he dives down to about the 33 over there to make the tackle. The first hit was Burton White, that senior cornerback who's had a busy first quarter already making some nice tackles and providing some good pass coverage. You know, Jeremy Shelley is a very good place kicker for Broughton, but with this slick field, they're going to want to get him as much uh, of an advantage as possible. I think in that on that call, perhaps they're trying to improve their field position just a little bit and maybe take a shot with their field goal kicker, Jeremy Shelley. There's head coach Chris Martin, his third year at uh, Broughton High School. Third down now. Maybe about uh, 20 yards, 21, call it officially. Price back to pass, fakes, now airs it out. It is too far, intended for Sedaris Wright, and incomplete. So now it's fourth down, and a very long field goal situation here. Well, obviously, Broughton doing the exact opposite of what I thought they might be doing, headed right down for the end zone, but that pass is complete. And I suppose there's a decision to be made, but I guess uh, I guess we're going to see Broughton perhaps go for it here. I'm not sure they're going to uh, want to punt it with the ball on the short field, and uh, that's probably going to be just a little too far for a field goal attempt. So on fourth down and a long way to go, Broughton sets up in a shotgun. Too uh, short to uh, punt too long for a field goal, so they're going to go for it on fourth down. Price back to pass, has time, has time, now throws, it is caught at the 15, right at the 10, at the 5, and he dives out of bounds at about the 2. And a first down for the Broughton Capitals. 
a key drive in this uh, first quarter. They're down only by the score of 12-0, but a chance here to push some points on the board before the end of the quarter. What a pass. And this is what you need. You need your, you need your playmakers to make plays to Darius Wright, catching that ball and able to get by Burton White, who uh, was on man-to-man -man coverage on him and able to get the first down and give Broughton their best chance. So first down and goal from about the two-yard line. And it will be uh, Terry always hitting the backfield by Taylor Fisher, and the rest of the defense swarms over him out of the five. And depending on forward progress, Paul Doherty, this could be a loss of a couple of yards. And Taylor Fisher, senior, in there to make the first hit. Yeah, we'll get another look at it. Taylor Fisher and a, a couple of Wake Forest defenders. Uh, Albert Rumsey in on that one as well. So Wake Forest now in a goal, almost a goal line stand situation on second and goal. Second and goal from the four, so a loss of two. Backs in the eye and movement, and there's a, well, that play is busted up. Movement first, then the defensive line came in and hit the offensive lineman who didn't move, and the ball jarred loose, and there was no fumble on the play. It'll be a false start, so first a loss of two and now a loss of five more so it will be a second down and goal from the nine and again another look at head coach Chris Martin here at Broughton he said to his guys before this game hey the field's a little bit wet it's raining but this is football we can do everything tonight we can throw it we can we can run the ball and let's get let's get our minds around executing our game plan and some of these things aren't really weather related that false start not really weather related that's there. absolutely right it's that mental aspect that's so important Bryce back to pass will toss it up in the air it is caught touchdown number 35 Darren Johnson a six foot senior 205 pounder and he caught that one the tight end kind of snuck in there and found himself all alone now that was a great great catch I'm sure we'll get another look at it after the uh, point after attempt as uh, Jeremy Shelley is going to come in to give Broad a chance to pull within five. Here's the uh, snap from center. The put down, the kick is up. It is right into your living room. And an all-important extra point attempt is good by Shelley. And with one minute and five seconds to go here in the opening quarter, it's a Wake Forest 12 and Broughton 7. So a nice drive, of course, ignited by that good kickoff return by Lee Brown. And Broughton having a little trouble establishing a run so far. They're in their passing game going left and right, not really doing it. But now going down the field, finding some man coverage. In that case, an open seam that Darren Johnson makes the most of his opportunity. And Broughton is right back in this one, still here in the first quarter, of course. It's homecoming. You can see the uh, Wake Forest Roseville cheerleaders out in front. And they're, uh, I'm sorry, that's the Broughton cheerleaders on the other side of the field. My apologies. And they're cheering to a very hearty crowd as they've come across town from Broughton High School to cheer on their caps. Of course, Broughton losing last week against Leesville Road at their homecoming game. And uh, it's uh, homecoming here at Wake Forest. Now we're on the Wake Forest side of the field. And once again, a, a good look at the Wake Forest Roseville cheerleaders in the student section, and they're fired up. <laughs> and they got Cougars written on their stomachs and chests there and ready to show their spirit here tonight. Homecoming here at Trentini Stadium. They're not letting the rain dampen their spirits. They are here for tonight's big game. Wake Forest Roseville 12, Broughton 7. Here's the kickoff. And this one is a uh, short kick that is uh, taken by uh, number 10, Brian Phillips, uh, just inside, well, at the 30-yard line. Well, we mentioned at the top, the keys of the game for Wake Forest, uh, controlling the clock, getting good field position in the kicking game, and so far, so good tonight. Good hands there by Brian Phillips. And uh, we'd like to thank one of our fine sponsors on the broadcast. That's uh, GMC. 
GMC being a fine uh, sponsor. We'd like to thank them. We can't be sure how you use their trucks and SUVs, so we engineer all of them to the highest standard, and that is professional grade. GMC, proud supporter of high school athletics here and high school football on Time Warner Cable. And there's a run by Jordan Kramer up the middle, and uh, he gets up across the uh, 35 to about the 39, close to a Cougar first down. He'll be a yard shot with uh, 44 seconds to go in the opening quarter. And our score, 12-7. Wake Forest Roseville has had two touchdowns, one on a, a two-yard run by Brandon Davis, another 11-yard run by Robert Kusanke. And they led 12-0, but uh, Broughton came back and uh, from uh, 30 yards away on a good kickoff return by Lee Brown, put it into the end zone. Now here comes back Denzel Reyna for Wake Forest Roseville, and he brings it down the field up across the, uh, third, down inside the 35 to the 30-yard line as he had a big run there. Well, the power attack of the big fullback Jordan Kramer a minute ago, uh, three yards in a cloud of dust becomes nine yards after that little fumble. Well, now they get to go to uh, Denzel Reyna. He breaks the tackle at the point of attack, and he's got some room on the outside. The safety has to come over and make the tackle, but it looks like a flag on the field, and it uh, looks like this is coming back. 30-yard run negated by what looks to be a holding penalty. He had some good blocking out in front, and that wide receiver just kind of kicking out that corner might have been the trouble there. They're now talking with... Uh, the Broughton defender, number 54, Matt Schuster. He's a linebacker. And uh, also number uh, 50, Matt Taylor, the defensive lineman, a 6'2", 220-pound senior. So we'll see what... Uh, they do here. So 12-7 here in the first quarter with uh, 17 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Well, you know the NHL hockey season has actually started, yep. but there's still plenty of time for you to pick up the NHL Center Ice package. It's your, ta uh, your ticket to maximum ice time with up to 40 out-of-market games per week. You can order NHL Center Ice before October 10th and save $20 off the regular season package. Go to www.twcnc.com or call 866-4-TWC-NOW. And NHL Center Ice is pretty nice, especially if you're from out of town. we got a lot of our out-of-towners who have moved into the area that uh, would like to see their home team. And as they put the ball in play here, we have the end of the first quarter. So homecoming here at Trentini Stadium and the Wake Forest Roseville Cougars lead the Brown Capitals here in this Cap 7 game by the score of 12 to 7. We'll take a timeout and we'll be back with more of the St. Lawrence Holmes High School Football Game of the Week when we return after this. Are you looking to hire an employee in the Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill area? Then post your jobs on WorkTriangle.com. Posting a job on WorkTriangle.com is easier and more cost-effective than the newspaper. It's the best way to find great local candidates. Posting a job on WorkTriangle.com is easy. Employers have unlimited space to describe their jobs, and your postings can instantly be viewed by thousands of local job seekers. Post a job today and find great local candidates. At St. Lawrence Homes, we give you the best of all worlds. We're a local builder that's large enough to offer you the advantages of both price and quality while providing dependable service and custom quality features in our homes. You'll find we offer you much more for your money. More square footage, innovative designs, and standard features that other builders consider expensive upgrades. St. Lawrence Homes. Thoughtfully designed. Carefully crafted. Perfectly located. Welcome back to the St. Lawrence Holmes High School Football Game of the Week exclusively here on Time Order Crate Cable and uh, at the end of one quarter of play here at Trentini Stadium. Beautiful football stadium where tonight we've got a lot of beautiful rain and uh, it's uh, making things, uh, well, not so beautiful on the football field. 12-7 our score and there is the rain that is coming down. And you know we talked with Coach Chris Martin of Broughton, and I'll finish my thought here in just a second. But here's a run off that right side. This looks like Brian Phillips, and there is nothing there for him. 
as uh, defensively, Broughton's number uh, 59, Dwayne DeBerry, came in to make that stop. But we're talking with Coach Chris Martin. Now, that rain, it looks like a little bit more of a driving rain. Uh, I mean, we can still see it's not a blinding rain, uh, but it um, looks like uh, the rain is falling a little more harder than uh, than what it was before, and look at that. And, and, uh, the difference. and he was saying that, yeah, we, we can do stuff in this rain, but can you do the same stuff you want to and throw the ball in that rain right there? So that's the question here tonight. No gain on that uh, second down play. So it's third down and 10, and it's going to be a pass situation, and nothing there as brought down in the backfield for a sack is Brandon Davis and uh, DeBerry, as well as uh, number 58, Rayvon Stanback. He is 6'2", 270. DeBerry at 5'10", 200. They bring down for the first sack of the defense, showing their first signs of life here on making that stop. And a big stop for Broughton. They've got the score. They're back in this one, of course. And we're just underway here in the second quarter, so nothing but time in this football game. But uh, Broughton not happy, I'm sure, for uh, Way Forest to get those two quick scores, but they're able to get that defensive stop, and they should get good field position. They might have a shot at blocking this punt. Caleb Epps punting this one away, and uh, no chance for Lee Brown. He's going to let it go, and it will die just inside the 35-yard uh, line. So that's a look at uh, the press box location here at, uh, at Trentini Stadium. Well, as we uh, thank once again Tom Warner Cable uh, for, of course, being a, such an important part of this broadcast. We want to remind you about Movies On Demand. You can order Blockbuster movies right in the comfort of your home anytime with no late fees. Hundreds of titles are available. Simply tune to Channel 501 for Movies On Demand. So here is a first down in 10 situation for Broughton. They scored on their last possession and they have it first down in 10 at their own 34. And this will be a uh, run that's uh, stuffed out there, snuffed out there and brought down for no gain. Number 50 for Wake Forest Roseville. Uh, number 90 actually, Travis Jones uh, was in there. Also uh, number 50 as well. And he is not on my roster, so we'll get a. Uh, we got the updated roster here that we'll have in just a second. That is Cameron Davis. Uh, so we'll get that uh, written down. Second down and 12. Cameron Davis, number 50, on the tackle. And so it is uh, a shotgun formation here for Price. Fakes the handoff to Brown. Drops back to pass. Now we'll throw. Caught Brown. First down. 50 and down at about the 45-yard line, where he is finally pushed out of bounds. So Broughton now able to stretch it out just a little bit. Their passing attack beginning to, to get into, uh, into sync here. And uh, Price is going to drop back. He's going to find Lee Brown open in space, and he is going to make the most of it. So Broughton now getting their offense cooking here. They've got the last score and a little bit of momentum here as their defense made a nice stop. And Broughton making the most of their offensive opportunity so far with another first down. Now off to a slow start, as you said. Maybe it was because they did not warm up that for that long on the field. But uh, they get the first down, and they are in business at Wake Forest 46. Price back to pass, and he will throw. It is caught. Brown again, and it is close to another capital first down. Well, a couple of times at the beginning of this game, they tried to establish the run. We've seen Spencer Terry uh, very effective as that lone setback. And here, with a couple of uh, faked handoffs, but there's no pressure on Josh Price there. He's able to play very similar, if not an exact duplicate, to the one they just ran. And finally, Lee Brown available once again. And it looks like they're going to perhaps measure on the field, but it's going to be very close to a first down. So Josh Price getting plenty of time, perhaps... Maybe the footing being a little bit of an issue now, as uh, head coach Martin said, hey, we know where we're going on offense, and uh, it's the defenders that have to be a little more careful about their footing in this situation. And uh, But in any case, the defensive line not getting the pressure on Price uh, last couple of times here. Little screen passes have been uh, working. Backs coming out of the backfield. That time Taylor Fisher knew what was happening, just couldn't get there in time. First down and 10 for Broughton at the uh, Cougar 36. And it will be a handoff run, Spencer Terry. And there's his first positive running room as he gets down inside the 30, down to about the 26 and close to another first down. I believe he'll be a, about a yard shy of a first down. 
Well, that lone setback, Spencer Terry, he doesn't have anybody blocking for him, and the key to being effective is he's got to be able to get past that first line of attack. He's got to break that first tackle if he can, and uh, now Spencer Terry able to pull that off, and uh, he's going to be uh, pretty close to a first down. It looks like he gained about eight on the play. Second down and just a couple as the uh, rain falls here at Trentini Stadium. They'll send Brown in motion to that right side. Fake the handoff. Fake another handoff. Back to pass his price. He's hit as he throws, but it was caught at the 20 by a number 21, Torres Sanders. He's 5'9", 145 pounds. Just a little guy, but uh, he caught that pass as the quarterback was hit. Now here's an example of Wade Forrest getting that pressure, but Josh Price uh, with, uh, with poise, but that ball <laughs> clearly batted away. I didn't see that initially, but on the replay, it's pretty obvious, and uh, what a, a nice bit of luck there for the ball. Well, his offense. arm was hit. He wasn't even throwing to Torres Sanders, I don't believe. I, I think, think he was throwing right. to somebody else, and it just happened to go to Torres Sanders. So first down and 10 for Broughton inside the 25. Price throwing. Boy, he is on uh, fire right now. And he's got uh, good momentum and uh, kind of clicking. He's in the zone. Sedaris right now feeling it, clapping, getting the sidelines going. That a gain of uh, about seven or eight. So it'll be a short second down here for the Capitals. They're starting to move the ball effectively. You're seeing shorter, you're seeing better plays on first down and shorter yardage on second and third down. And still the offensive line getting enough space for Josh Price when they need it. Uh, Wake Forest getting good pressure a second to go, but not, not too often in this drive. No, and uh, Wake Forest Roseville showing blitz that we've got movement in the offensive line. So this will back up the Caps five yards. So instead of second and two, it'll be second down and seven. Well, if you were with us a couple of weeks ago, we thought we were going to see this when Broughton went to Millbrook High School and played a pretty good defensive squad there, as Wake Forest certainly is. And we thought they were going to open up this passing attack against uh, Millbrook. Instead, they, they were shut down and forced to go to the run. Tonight, they've hardly been able to get the run going, but this, uh, this passing game is really in the flow. So 7.20 to go, first quarter, or first half, excuse us, and there we are up in our location, way up at top. This is about the highest we've been at a high school football field, and it is a great view. Price back to pass. He is rushed. He throws. He's got a man at the 10, and he dropped the ball. Incomplete intended for Spencer Terry, and uh, I think he was too wide open. Well, that's, uh, that's that... That's a very long screen, but it certainly is a screen, and uh, Terry was wide open. The ball may be a little getting wet, and I think that yep. pass uh, without the zip and without the nice spiral that we've seen uh, from Price tonight, but uh, Sperry, uh, Spencer Terry unable to come down with it. And so Broughton finally sputtering a little bit as opposed to Wake Forest really, uh, really challenging on defense. But uh, Wake Forest will be lucky if they can make a stop here and perhaps hold brought into a long field goal. Third down and seven from the 18. Price back to pass. We'll throw out here in the flat. Caught, but not enough for a first down. Number 27 catching this one, Mike Bausa, and getting forced out of bounds at about the 15. He's going to be five yards shy, rather three yards shy of a first down. And Broughton just doing a great job of getting these short little passes. And uh, Bowser makes a catch, improves their field position if they are going to go for the field goal. And it looks like they perhaps have changed the personnel there. Uh, Jeremy Shelley wearing jersey number three is out on the field. So it looks like Broughton will take an opportunity to attempt the field goal. From 33 yards, Shelley with... The uh, kick, 5'9", sophomore, 150 pounds. He will be kicking from the right flat, from the right side of the field, so he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to curve it to the left. It is on its way, and it is gone! 33-yard field goal for Jeremy Shelley, and the Broughton Capitals trim this lead now to 12 to 10. Well, we knew that Jeremy Shelley had the leg. He's got a 50-yarder this year. A couple of really good field goal kickers here at a cap seven in the area. And uh, a 
great opportunity for Jeremy Shelley there to put some points on the board for himself. And uh, Broughton is within two now. Wade Forrest with that 12 to 10 lead. So 12-10 is our score. Another close game, another good game here for the St. Lawrence Holmes High School Football Friday Night Game of the Week exclusively on Time Warner Cable. Greg Mayer along with Paul Doherty and just getting excited each and every week. Great game after great game. And you know, next week we'll be with Wake Forest Roseville again as they travel on the road to take on the Wakefield Wolverines. Wakefield, of course, tonight at Leesville Road. That game postponed. Another big game in the Cap 7 tonight. Sanderson at Millbrook. Millbrook 1-1. One one. Sanderson 1-0 one oh in the Cap 7. Maybe that game was postponed uh, tonight. And uh, also another big game in the Greater Noose. Garner hosting Southeast Raleigh. Oh my, that's a big game. Whether or not they will get that game underway, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, good game after good game that we have for you right here on the St. Lawrence Holmes Game of the Week. So you don't want to go anywhere. You'll be able to uh, watch every game every Friday night at 10.30. Here's a squib kick by Broughton. And it is touched by Brian Phillips. And he dropped it there. And the ball is picked up. Was it recovered by Broughton or Wake Forest Roseville? It is Broughton football. So they boot this one in the air short. Brian Phillips had to come over to try to get it and could not get it. Well, we thought we think that we saw East Wake invent this play this year. As, uh, <laughs> East Wake went for a couple of short uh, kickoffs, and uh, absolutely, they saw it a little while ago. We had the, uh, the kickoff a few minutes ago, a uh, similar situation where uh, Brian Phillips had to come up and make a good catch. That time, he was several yards back, and uh, you know, of course, if it goes 10 yards and Broughton gets it, it's uh, it's a first down. So he felt like he had to go for it and had nothing to lose, but he was unable to come down with it, and Broughton in business here. Well, especially on a night like tonight where it's sloppy, anything can happen, and that time Phillips just could not come up with it. He did touch it, and I believe it was number four, Joe Valari, who was there to make the recovery. So Price will throw on first down, and this one is incomplete. And thrown intended uh, for uh, Sedaris right, and kind of threw it behind him, and it didn't look like Sedaris was expecting it. So an incomplete pass, call it uh, second down and 10. So uh, next week, Wake Forest Roseville at Wakefield. And of course, Wakefield's going to be uh, playing on uh, Monday night, the 9th of uh, October against Leesville Road. And that game uh, uh, postponed until then. So not a big game for Wakefield. They were 0-2 going into that game. And a chance to get a win, their first win in the Camp Severn. Here's a fake handoff throw down field, incomplete, intended for number 21, Torres Sanders. And now it will be third down. And I do think that pass is going to be blocked by the defensive secondary, but uh, quite honestly, that's one of the few times that Wake Forest's defense has really disrupted the Capitals' uh, offense in this last couple of series. Uh, Sedaris Wright, of course, was open a second ago, and uh, that pass incomplete. So, you know, Wake Forest defense is uh, perhaps in a little bit of an unusual position here as they're not dominating the uh, last couple of series. Broughton doing a terrific job of mixing up their pass plays. Third down. Here's the fake handoff. Price is going to air it out. He's got a man down there. It is caught at about the two-yard line. Was he inbounds? It is a pass to Lamar Scott, number 30, who made that catch. And once again, Broughton with uh, man coverage down the field. And Josh Price is really going to let that one fly. Burton White out there with a chance to make a play, but a terrific pass and catch. And Broughton is right on the goal line, first and goal. Great catch by Lamar Scott, number 30. There he is there, going back out to that left side, being watched there by number 15, Burton White. First down and goal for the Caps. This is their third possession in a row where they're looking to score. Price will hand off Terry right side, and he is in for a touchdown. Two-yard touchdown run by Spencer Tier. And Broughton has their first lead. Once down 12-0. Now up by four, 16 to 12. Well, you talk about momentum shifts. 
Broughton giving up field position to Wake Forest. They take advantage, go up at, in a game 12 to nothing. And then Broughton gets a good uh, kickoff return play and uh, begin to really churn things up on offense as uh, Jeremy Shelley is going to put that one through. And what do you know? 17 to 12. So two really after they scored that first touchdown, uh, the seven points, they got a, they held on downs, good defensive stand, used a great, and here's the run there by Spencer Terry, and a good block on Taylor Fisher. But uh, after that, it was a Lee Brown kickoff return all the way to the Wake Forest Roseville 30. They used that to get a field goal ball and then an onside kick that they were able to recover. Joe Valari covered and now they, uh, uh, Lamar Scott pass reception on third down and 10 from Josh Price and then of course the uh, two yard touchdown run by uh, Spencer Terry and uh, 17 unanswered points. Well we've got a long way to go in this game. It's homecoming here at Wake Forest but uh, a big momentum shift here. The Broughton offense really able to mix it up, go to that pass attack, work it out of the spread. They've uh, they've had success with with uh, the uh, the pass all the way down the field in man coverage. They've had success with the screen pass and uh, Spencer Terry, of course, adding that extra element. A very uh, very good running back, and uh, he's got a touchdown tonight as well. Best defense is an offense that can maintain possession. They've got a lot of guys on that far side once again. As uh, Shelley looking to kick off, will they tr attempt another onside? Shelley boots this one again up in the air, but this one a little farther and is taken by Phillips at the 30, and he will be well down there at the 30-yard line. So Wake Forest Roseville will now have the football here as they start out first down and 10 from their own 30-yard line. Well, we mentioned a second ago, uh, movies on demand here at Time Warner Cable. Well, let me talk about one of my favorite things, and that's Roadrunner service. If you're tired of slow downloads, you need Roadrunner. Roadrunner High Speed Online is super fast and always on. You can download music and picture files quicker with Roadrunner. Leave dial-up and DSL in the dust. Roadrunner, a service of Time Warner Cable. Here's Denzel Reyna at the 30. Reyna at the 35, 40, 45, and he's up to midfield. Here's a flag that comes in late as Reyna is taken down. Number 20 on the tackle uh, for uh, Broughton High School, Josh Muzan, a senior 6'3", 160. The safety comes over to make that tackle, and we'll see what the officials uh, got here. Well, as well as Broughton has been mixing it up with the air attack, Wake Forest done a very good job mixing it up on the ground, but of course now they're behind by five points, and it looks like they're going to wave off that flag. No flag on the play, so it's back to action. Chris Barton looking over his uh, defense here, and here come the Wake Forest Roseville Cougars down by five with 6.07 to go here in the first half. Jordan Kramer, the lone setback. Rain on the left, and Kosenke flanked to the right. Brandon Davis stepping up to the uh, line of scrimmage, hands underneath the center, and will hand off to Kramer. Up the middle, big hole, 40, 35, 30, 25, all the way down to the 22-yard line. Two big runs. The first by Reyna, and now this one by Kramer. That's right, Reyna running off the right side, and Kramer running up the gut. And uh, Kramer is going to just accelerate, and he's going to pick up that one block there at the line of scrimmage. He's going to have one guy to beat, and uh, he does his best to run away from him. The Wake Forest moving the ball effectively. It's going to be up to them, perhaps, to make something on this drive, get some points, and then see if they can stop Broughton's offense. <laughs> First down and 10 at the 23-yard uh, line, and not much running room there for Kramer as he's brought down. But with Wake Forest defense only giving up 13 points per game, I really did not expect a, a shootout, essentially, here at Wake Forest uh, during homecoming night, but it uh, looks like uh, whatever happens, it's going to be a fairly high-scoring game as we've got five minutes and 20 seconds or so here to go in the first half. You know, and, and you know, with 5-18 and counting, still no turnovers in this football game. We had, of course, the onside kick, and here is 
Brandon Davis looks like on himself, or is this Reyna? Uh, this would uh, be as soon as he gets up here. We check it out. It is Reyna who runs this uh, side, and after a no gain by Kramer, Reyna runs off that right side and picks up eight yards. So it'll be third down now and two, but Wake Forest Roseville moving the ball quickly down the field. And uh, looking to get into a uh, good scoring position here. They're inside the red zone now. Kramer, the lone setback. And it will be handoff to Kramer. Stopped. He runs off to that left side and finds running room and gets close to a first down. And he does get the first down. The official comes in right there and says it is a first down. And so first down inside the 15. It's down to about the 11-yard line. The last couple of weeks, Wake Forest has scored over 70 points, I believe, on offense, and they've really been stingy on defense. They right. had a bye week, and uh, so they've really got to get their defensive mentality back. But, of course, they got a lot of work left to do here. Kramer at the five. Kramer spinning. Does he get in? Yes, he does. Here comes the official making the touchdown signal. 11-yard touchdown run by Jordan Kramer. Well, this is a lot like a, a jab <laughs> and a, a jab and a punch here for a boxer, isn't it? Uh, Denzel Reyna to the right and Jordan Kramer up the middle. And so far, so good. Wake Forest uh, strikes again and retakes the lead. Now they lead by just one point and now the all-important extra point. Whether they go for two, it looks like they're going to go for two. So here comes Davis underneath center with Kramer, his lone setback. Reyna in motion. Kramer right side. Oh, he's hit hard, and he will get nothing. First man through was number 31 for Broughton. And uh, that was Wade Snitikor, 6'1", junior, 185-pounder. Well, as uh, effective as Broughton has been through the air, Wake Forest has been on the ground, and uh, both offenses working very well tonight. We know that Broughton is going to give up almost as many points as they score. Wake Forest, of course, has been much more stingy with their defense. As we take another look at it, Jordan Kramer breaking tackles, and he's going to pull about four of Broughton Capitals with him into the end zone. As Wake Forest retakes the lead, now they're not able, they weren't able to get that initial extra point, and they've not had success with the two-point conversion yet. So uh, Wake Forest will lead this game by one, 18 to 17. So a wild first half with uh, lots of points being put up on the board. And with 4.15 to go in the first half, the score 18 to 17 on the St. Lawrence Holmes High School football game of the week. Well, one thing I'm sure everyone at home knows is uh, this is a little tropical tonight with this, uh, with this rain, but it's also dropping into the 40s tonight. So it's getting pretty cold out there as well. Here's the kickoff. And this will be a line drive, and will be taken at about the uh, five-yard line. Up to the 20, and then pushed back by a host of Wake Forest Roseville Cougars is the uh, man Lee Brown, number uh, 25. So with that, we want to remind everybody, of course, uh, that uh, the tonight's uh, Sunrisers, the, the Risers tonight, brought to you by Sunbelt Rentals, provided courtesy. Uh, all your equipment needs, there's just one company. That's Sunbelt Rentals. Give them a call, 233-4692. As uh, those Risers tonight, we'd like to thank Sunbelt Rentals for being a part of high school football. Uh, right here on Time Warner Cable. And Janan always gets the best seat in the house. Way up there. Hello. Tonight, sorry, Janan. Couldn't make it as dry as we would normally have it for you. But uh, tonight, nonetheless, she's a trooper. And uh, she is out there bearing the elements. And uh, tonight, providing us with some great uh, views from way up atop. So Sundell Reynolds providing us with those nice camera angles from Wake Forest Roseville High School. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we broadcast this game, we get some uh, help and assistance from our producers in the truck. And uh, we just want to remind those guys that uh, it's air-conditioned in the summer and it's heated in the winter inside that truck. And the rest of us are out here in the elements. So uh, it's a little tougher than it looks out here, guys. And we can hear them laughing in the background. I don't know if you can hear that over the air, but here we go. 
First down and 10, and here's a screen pass over here in the left flat. Brian Phillips has it defended nicely, so a short gain there by Lee Brown, number uh, 25. First and down, and it was first down and 10 from the 12, and he got up to about the 15. Well, once again, Broughton doing such a good job of mixing things up. You know, they've gone down the field, so they've struck north and south, but uh, this little left-to-right uh, passing game as well is almost like a running attack, and we've seen that earlier in the season. Again, on our uh, show a couple of weeks ago, they really stuck to the run against Millbrook, but tonight they're able to control the clock and control uh, the time of possession with the pass instead of the run. So it'll be second down and seven. Price in shotgun formation, back to pass. He's got right out here at the 23. Right has it up across the uh, 25. First down, as the uh, clock will stop, they will advance the chains, and Sedaris right clapping there as he gets back to his uh, huddle. I get the feeling that tonight the last person that scores may win this ballgame. I'll tell you what, we've mentioned it a couple of times, and uh, especially as the season goes by, Wake Forest's defense usually gets tougher. And man, they are really up against a, uh, an orchestrated offensive attack here. They're not getting the pressure on the quarterback that they, um, that they hoped they would. And in uh, man coverage, Josh Price is making the most of his uh, passing opportunities. At the 21, three wideouts to the right, one to the left. Price back to pass. He will throw to right at the 30 and is hit by Phillips and then a host of others. They will stop him at forward progress. That previous play there by Sedaris Wright, covered by Burton White. Um, Burton slipped, lost his footing, and that enabled Sedaris to uh, be able to uh, catch that pass open. And uh, obviously with the, the footing the way it is, and an athlete like Sedaris Wright, you're going to want to give him some yards. And, you know, planning and cutting is very difficult here tonight. Second down and six after the gain of four. Bryce faking and now airing it out. He's got right. It is overthrown and almost intercepted. Burton White, who was uh, covering Sedarius White, or right, excuse me, Sedarius Wright, uh, giving him a few yards, making sure he didn't beat him on a deep pass pattern almost had that interception. Well, Josh Price has done a great job tonight of putting the ball on the right shoulder, and I think this time he thought Wright was going to stay on a sideline and uh, throw, was trying to throw to his outside shoulder. Wright went inside, so they maybe a little zig when they meant to zag there, but yep. uh, Josh Price doing a great job generally of keeping the ball away from those defenders. The Wake Forest defenders able to corral those receivers and not give them much after the catch, but uh, Broughton definitely, definitely getting the ball down the field. Third down and six. Price back to pass. Will throw. It is caught at the 45-yard line or 44 by Lee Brown. Boy, he had two men there, and he was able to haul in that pass. And look at the dirt mud that uh, these football, football players have on them already. Well, there's another example of it. Josh Price, that time in double coverage. He's going to look really at Lee Brown the whole way, and he fires. That's a strike. And what a great, great catch. And uh, two feet in, and uh, wow, Broughton moving the chains here. First down. First down and 10 at the 44. Price rifling that one in there, showing some strength in that right arm. He will drop back to pass. Has pressure, fires downfield, and incomplete. Intended for Lamar Scott, almost had it at the 35. And, you know, you're going to see this on both ends, the defensive pressure trying to get to Josh Price, and it looks like a Wake Forest player is down in the Broughton backfield. Wasn't able to pick up his number. He's, uh, well, he's rolling up to his seated position, so I think he's going to be okay. But uh, trying to get more pressure on the quarterback and then down the field, uh, trying to go after those wide receivers and hoping that Josh Price's passing accuracy is going to be a little bit off and give them a shot at an inflection or even an interception. There's uh, number 56 for uh, Wake Forest Roseville getting up. Fred Dunstan, a uh, senior 5'10", 260 pounds. And there's the pass. Had it been hauled in, might have been a big touchdown run. 
The uh, players now on each uh, side of the field might be a little bit of a timeout here for this injury. We want to remind everybody about the Time Warner Cable digital phone. With digital phone, you can enjoy unlimited nationwide calling in North Carolina, the United States, and Canada for as low as $39.95 a month. Unlimited local, in-state, and free long distance caller ID, call waiting, all that other great stuff. You can add voicemail service for only $3.94 more per month. What's good is it works with your existing phones and jacks, and also you can keep your existing phone number. That's digital phone, Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Price is going to air this one out. Incomplete or intercepted? No. Incomplete. Burton White over there looking for that interception. Could not come up with it. So it'll be third down and long for Broughton here is uh, with a minute 51. They're just looking for some extra extra points here and maybe try to get close for a field goal. They trail by one. 18-17 in this uh, shootout. Price at the 39. Line of scrimmage is the 44. He will drop back to pass, step up, throw, and it is caught. Caught at the 42-yard line by uh, number 27, Mike Bowser. That was a great catch there on a, on a throw that was low. You know, in that time, Josh Price is looking to his left and then checks off, goes to his right, finds, ba finds Bowser. And, uh, you know, it seems like Wade Forrest has got a hope that Josh Price is going to miss right now. He's uh, really on a roll. Well, they got to get some pressure up front. They have not been able to do that here in the last few uh, series of, d of plays for Broughton. Price will air it out again, and this time he overshoots the intended receiver. And there was a flag in the Wake Forest defensive secondary, so not really sure what that's going to be. But, uh, you know, once again, lots of man coverage, and uh, Josh Price is able to take advantage. Looks like it's going to be a holding penalty going against Broughton. So, as I said, the last couple of drives, Broughton has really uh, done it to themselves uh, a couple of times here. Wake Forest defense not really uh, that effective yet against, uh, against this look. A minute 27 to go here in the first half. Price talking with Coach Chris Martin, and now we'll go back to the uh, the huddle. A hold on the play will back them up, and we'll get the final spot here as the official still administering this penalty. It looks like at the 45. So it looks like a 10-yard penalty. How are you doing, everybody? Well, well, I, guess, well, I guess the biggest thing uh, for uh, for Wake Forest I defense. I get rid of Paul Doherty. He's not here in the first <laughs> That's right. Just, <laughs> just a disembodied voice. Good crowd here in attendance at Trentini Stadium for homecoming. Back to pass goes Price. He will throw. It is caught at the 40. Good reception of 13 yards. Well, I was going to say a second ago that Wake Forest defense is uh, perhaps playing to not give up the deep big play. That's they're, right. they're, they're backing up a little bit. Maybe maybe they're worried about their footing a little bit as defensive backs having to mainly uh, operate in reverse. They're, they're worried that, hey, you know, the offensive uh, receivers do know where they're going on these routes. And uh, maybe they're just a little bit more conservative. Uh, but Broughton on second down, once again inside Wake Forest territory. Second down seven. Price will again air it out and it is caught. First down inside the 30 down to about the 29 yard line. Torres Sanders catching this one. Boy, he's got all of his targets out there, and he is just picking apart the uh, Wake Forest secondary. And this time he gets a first down inside the 29 to the 28-yard line. So Broughton again, now under a minute to go in the half. And now getting closer to the red zone. Price with time. Will air it out to the end zone. Got a man. It is... Caught! Touchdown! Sidarius Wright! Twenty-seven yard touchdown pass from Price to Sidarius Wright. And Broughton takes the lead back. And Jeremy Shelley now in to attempt the extra point, just a sophomore with a lot of promise. 
Put down, the kick is up, it's in the air, and it is good. So with 38 seconds to go, Broughton back out on top by the score of 24 to 18. Well, just when I thought that holding penalty might make it tough for Broughton to even have a chance at a field goal before the end of the half, a couple of quick strikes down the field puts him in position, and here's another look at it. It's Josh Wright looking at man coverage down the right side of the field, heading, heads a pass down towards Sedaris Wright, and he catches it with about one foot left there in the end zone, and Broughton wow. once again takes the lead. You called it a shootout, and that's the only that's the only way to describe it. What I said earlier on, I, I really did not expect this with uh, right. Wake Forest defense so stingy, but uh, hey, there's going to be a lot of points put on the board tonight. Well, not only the stingy defense that uh, Wake Forest Roseville uh, has had over the past few weeks, but also just the way the weather has been. It doesn't allow for a speed kind of a shootout game, but it is uh, sloppy conditions, and uh, the defense may be having trouble as you said, back on their hunches, so to speak, and uh, not able to uh, stay with the speed there. But uh, Price, there he is smiling. He's got some great weapons on this offensive unit, and he is using them here tonight. Last week against Leesville, Broughton went into the locker room at halftime with a pretty big lead over Leesville, and they were That's at right. homecoming and at home, of course, and perhaps they were thinking, hey, you know, we've... Uh, you know, we've got the lead, and we can settle down a little bit and maybe be a little too conservative. Unfortunately, they made a few mistakes. Leesville Road stayed right with it and came back and won that game in essentially a shootout. Here on the road, Broughton cannot afford to do that. I know that Wake Forest will make some adjustments uh, coming out of uh, the halftime break, and uh, it's going to be a really, really big second half here at Wake Forest. Should be an excellent second half if it's anything the way this first half has been going. 24-18. And we'll watch the kickoff here. Once again, Shelley, he kicks this one high in the air, and it goes down to the uh, 25. And uh, returning this one up to the uh, 30 and scooting forward to the, uh, excuse me, the 20, and scooting forward to the 24-yard uh, line is uh, number 40 for uh, uh, Wake Forest Roseville. That's Robert Kosenke. So it's first down and 10. for Wake Forest as they trail here 24-18 with now 32 seconds to go. And you are watching the St. Lawrence Holmes High School Football Game of the Week exclusively here on Time Warner Cable. Here's a run, Reyna, 25, cuts it upfield to about the 32, maybe the 33, where he is brought down there. And it's good enough for a first, now close to a first down. They're gonna stop the clock here. And actually, Wake Forest now finally calls timeout. So with timeout now with 19 seconds to go and a six-point Broughton lead. There's a look at the uh, fans and tennis. A lot of fans. And, of course, each and every week we want to invite everybody to head on out to your school and, of course, support High school football in Wake County, and that's a lot of people here tonight for the weather that we've had, Paul. That's a lot of people here tonight who uh, are getting wet but are enjoying every minute of uh, tonight's uh, high school football game. And uh, hey, after the game, go home and watch the St. Lawrence Holmes Friday Night Game of the Week each and every Friday night at 10.30 on Channel 24, and also uh, Saturday nights at 7 o'clock on uh, Time Warner Cable Channel 24 as well. Here's a run off that right side. This is Reina 35, 40, 45, midfield, 45, 40, 35, and he is down to the 32-yard line and finally pushed out of bounds. Now with 10 seconds to go, but a big run by Denzel Reina. Well, we've seen it all night off the right side following uh, the pulling guard, Absher. You'll see him come into the shot here wearing jersey number 55. He's going to pull all the way. And, uh, boy, he doesn't have to touch anybody until he gets down into the secondary, and that's going to spring Reyna. And he's going to run down the sidelines knowing that if he's going to get hit, he's going to get out of bounds and stop the clock. The rain and mud on those sidelines. Ten seconds to go. So... Going to need to make a shot here towards the end zone, I think, if you're Brandon Davis and the uh, Cougars. They spot the ball. Looks to be it around maybe the 30-yard line. And now they're saying there was a penalty on the field. 
or a penalty on the play. It was holding. Yeah, I never saw the flag actually, and uh, there was a conversation going on down there. But I had, I guess, I guess we knew once they didn't spot that ball that something was up. But uh, rain still falling here at Wake Forest Roseville High School Trentini Stadium. There it is on second down. Reyna, 45-40. Reyna down to about the 36-yard line, and they stop and call a timeout here real quick with three-tenths of a second remaining here in the first half. So three-tenths of a second, a chance for uh, one more play uh, to be run. And don't forget, uh, coming up following our St. Lawrence Holmes High School football game of the week. We will be picking our player of the game, brought to you by Capital Bank. Capital Bank is a full-service community bank with nine locations in the triangle. Stop by today and let the associates of Capital Bank show you service worth talking about. You can visit them at www.capitalbank-nc.com, member FDIC. And, of course, Capital Bank... Uh, with a gift of $250 to each school's athletic department in honor of uh, that player of the game. So we'd like to thank Capital Bank for providing the high school players of the game. Back to pass goes Davis as the half will end, and Davis will put it down and run the football. Oh, he <laughs> ran into a man head on, bounced off him, uh, and that was finally brought down at the 24-yard line, and that'll be it for the first half. Wow. A very, very high scoring first half at the end of our first half. Our score is Broughton 24 and Wake Forest Roseville 18. But that's only the half of it. We still have another half to go. So coming up, we'll have a look at some uh, first half thoughts here. And then of course, the second half kickoff. It's homecoming here at Trentini Stadium. And we'll be back with halftime in just a moment. You're watching the St. Lawrence Holmes High School Football Game of the Week exclusively on Time Warner Cable, and we'll be right back. Broughton 24, Wake Forest Roseville 18. Caps involved in some high scoring affairs lately, including last week's loss to Leesville Road. But uh, tonight, at halftime, ahead by the score of 24-18. They were ahead last week, but then Leesville Road came back, Paul, and uh, of course uh, outscored uh, Broughton in that uh, high school football game. Uh, the Caps looking for a better outcome here tonight to try to win their second Cap 7 conference game. So Cap 7 conference really on the roll right now, and uh, of course these two teams uh, have been <laughs> well, showing us a great performance here tonight, 24-18. A performance we didn't think was going to happen uh, this way, the shootout that we have right here on, here on this field. Well, we said at the top of the show, Broughton scores 28 points roughly per game. They give up roughly 28 per game, so this one going more to form for them. Wake Forest, of course, uh, limiting their opponents to 13 points per game, but in the last couple of weeks, uh, being very productive on offense. So maybe Wake Forest not too excited about being down six here at homecoming as uh, as uh, we get things underway here at halftime. But as far as the keys to the game, you know, they, they've limited turnovers. No turnovers for Wake Forest. But uh, everything else seems to be going Broughton's way just a little bit. They're not uh, controlling the clock. Broughton's offense has been out on the field most of the time here. And uh, they really haven't got the answer quite yet for Josh Price in that high-powered passing attack. But uh, we know they'll make some adjustments at halftime. Well, and for Broughton, of course, no turnovers, and that has happened as well. They've even actually gotten an onside kick attempt uh, for um, not really a turnover, so to speak, but they got the ball back and used that to their advantage to go down and, of course, uh, get the field goal. Uh, but they've uh, used the uh, benefit of, of that passing attack, uh, but they too have struggled in trying to stop the run that the uh, Cougars love to, uh, to use each and every Friday night. So uh, both teams right now, the offense, have uh, taken over in this football game and it sees Broughton ahead by the score of 24 to 18 so we see nothing more than uh, more excitement here in the second half but the defense will be the key in the second half who can stop 
the other offense here find a way to do that in the second half could come up with the victory. Homecoming here at Trentini Stadium, Wake Forest Roseville. Who's the queen of this year? We may find out and we may tell you. <laughs> Halftime here on the St. Lawrence Holmes High School Football Game of the Week. Coming up the second half kickoff when we return after this. Chevy's backed by the GM 100,000 mile warranty. It's a whole new level of confidence. You're gonna get what you need! With courtesy Team of the week. And at halftime, our score, Brunton 24 and Wake Forest Roseville 18. St. Lawrence Holmes Game of the Week exclusively here on Time Warner Cable. Yeah. And tonight's game brought to you by St. Lawrence Holmes. Thoughtfully designed and carefully crafted. All right, GMC, engineered to the highest standard, professional grade. And by Time Warner Cable, the power of you. From Wake Forest Roseville High School, it's the start of the second half as Broughton will kick this one away, and it's a short kick that will be taken by Wake Forest, one of the up men there at about the 37-yard line. So they will have a first down and 10. The Cougars will start out with possession here in the third quarter, down by the score of 24-18. Uh, to 18. Greg Mayer along with uh, Paul Doherty, and there's the fans in attendance here tonight. A good crowd, spirited crowd at homecoming. Looks like guys were wearing shirts, but they weren't really shirts. They were just like painted on shirts. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Cougars. Back to pass goes Brandon Davis. He will now tuck it and run, and he does not get much running room there. Over on the uh, tackle for Broughton, number uh, 58, Rayvon Stanback, and also number 54, Matt Schuster. And so no gain on the play call at second down and 10. Well, it is homecoming here at uh, Wake Forest Roseville High School, and of course they picked the queen uh, earlier uh, today at halftime, and uh, that was uh, Kelly Hayes. She's the queen of uh, Wake Forest Roseville here for the homecoming. Robert Krasenke will take that handoff. What a tight handoff there from Brandon Davis. Looked like he reached from behind and got that, but no gain on the play, so call it third down and long. And we actually had a, a clip of our halftime presentation where uh, the uh, uh, queen and her court were announced. And um, that right there she is. And Kelly Hayes, Miss Kelly Hayes winning the award this year, honor of, uh, and dropped <laughs> by accident uh, the uh, crowd here, but she got some pretty flowers and uh, she is honored here tonight as the uh, queen of uh, the 2006 uh, homecoming here at Wake Forest Roseville High School. So congratulations uh, to her uh, and her escorts. Uh, so on the uh, third down play, there was not much running room there for Wake Forest Roseville. And as we get back to action, it'll be a punting situation here um, for the uh, Cougars of Wake Forest Roseville as we just start the uh, third quarter of play. Fourth down and about eight. And punting this one uh, will be Caleb Epps. And he gets this one away. It will bounce at the 30. And uh, Broughton Lee Brown will let that roll to the 20-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10 for Broughton there. And uh, joining us here in the uh, press box uh, right now is, of course, the athletic director and uh, head basketball coach here at Wake Forest Roseville High School, and that's Chuck Hess. And uh, Chuck, good to have you with us here tonight. Thank you, Greg. It's a pleasure to have you and Paul here doing the game. And just a little disappointed. The weather conditions aren't a little bit better, but uh, looks like the, uh, the rain has let up a little bit. And 
hopefully the second half will be a little dry. Always disappointing on homecoming to have that <laughs> rain, but uh, what a great attendance tonight, yeah. and your fans really came out and uh, supported uh, the team and the school here tonight. Absolutely. We had a pep assembly this afternoon uh, in the stadium, and it was even, in, uh, we tried to work through the inclement weather, and the student body was out here in force, and uh, they showed up tonight for the game, and we're real proud that they've hung in there through these conditions, and uh, you know, it's just, it's football weather. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. And this is, uh, especially right now, a football time of the year as you're getting absolutely. closer towards the end of the regular season. Yes, absolutely. And uh, when you get down to this point, uh, you, you almost have to play the games. If you try to put it on a, if you try to play it, uh, postpone it and play it Monday, you put your uh, entire staff at a disadvantage because they got to get, they have to play the game that was postponed on Monday. And then you've got to get ready for your JV game and then your varsity game on Friday so it's just if you can do it on uh, Friday a night if it's at all possible to get in you, you do it now especially when you get in October. It was a second down and 12 on that pass play uh, coach just a second and uh, it was an incomplete pass so it's third down now and 12 uh, for the uh, Broughton Caps here uh, with 918 to go in the third quarter. We talked about adjustments and so far both defenses making those adjustments as they've come out of halftime. Uh, Broughton getting the stop a second to go here, or I'm sorry, Way Forest now with a shot at Josh Price, but he drops back to pass, looks down a field, and he's got Sedaris Wright. So just as I say they've made an adjustment, they go right back to Sedaris Wright. There's a flag down on the plane, so we'll see here uh, who this penalty is uh, is called against. But uh, great facilities. We enjoy coming here uh, to your school. Wanted to let you know about that. Uh, fine uh, press box location uh, high up uh, on the uh, field here and you've got to be happy with the facilities that you have here at uh, Wake Forest Roseville. Greg, we're very proud. We're very fortunate. Uh, Bob Ullman of St. Lawrence Homes and his uh, company came and refurbished this press box in, in uh, the year 2000 and we opened it back up uh, for the public and uh, we use it uh, as a, you know, it's a, it's a show place for our stadium and and this was originally Wake Forest College Stadium uh, back before they moved to Winston-Salem back in the, in the late 50s. But uh, we're real proud of our stadium and our facility and uh, we're proud of our student body and our athletic program. Great attendance here tonight. It's uh, third down now. The pass, uh, the penalty actually was on the uh, caps and it backs them up inside their own uh, 10 yard line to about the seven. So they've got a long third down situation here for uh, quarterback Josh Price. And uh, looking at this uh, quarterback coach, uh, obviously giving the defense fits here tonight. He's got a great arm. Oh yeah, he reminds me a lot of uh, Daniel Evans. It's now quarterback in at state. Uh, he's very talented. He's got excellent touch on the ball. I've watched him throw it out there to, tonight, especially in the conditions. Uh, being as wet and sloppy, he's, he's, he's laid the ball there for his receivers to catch. And it's, he's a very talented young man. Well, Broughton is going to get that fourth down situation, but I wanted to ask you, and I had a chance to ask you this before, but what's it, what does it mean to this program to have head coach Earl Smith here at Wake Forest? Uh, we're just, uh, we're very, very proud and very pleased to have Coach Smith here. He's an outstanding coach. Uh, he's, he's been coach of the year uh, just about every year that he was at Millbrook, and then he went down to Man uh, New Hanover and was down there for a few years. And, came back up into this area. We were just very blessed to have the opportunity that he was interested in the position when it became available. And I mean, he's a, he's a Hall of Fame high school, uh, NCHSAA high school, North Carolina high school coach. And uh, we're just very, very fortunate. He does a fantastic, a tremendous organization. He uh, does a super job with his staff. And uh, uh, right there, that's a, uh, Coach Dick Schatz, he's our offensive coordinator right there on the screen. Calling the shots. Calling the shots, right. He's doing <laughs> it, he, does, he does a good job. And Earl is great for letting his staff uh, have a lot of input. But at the same time, he is like the chairman of the board of a business. He kind of holds everybody accountable, and that's why we have really turned the corner uh, in our athletic program, especially in football. That's Coach Earl Smith right there. Um, once again, uh, in his... Um, third year? Fourth? This is his third year here, yes sir. Second down and 12 after the uh, short loss there on the run. 
Uh, the uh, Cougars have it first down, uh, third down, excuse me, second down at the 36-yard uh, line, and here's a run by Denzel Reyna. A uh, very high-scoring affair. We didn't know that it would come out like this in the first half to that 24-18 uh, to first-half score, uh, but um, you know, Broughton's been involved in some shootouts that Wake Forest defense has really played the last few weeks really well. Right, yeah, our defense has really hunkered down and done a good job. We had a JV game uh, last Thursday against Inlow, and the score was 60 to 50. And I mean, <laughs> I've never seen that many points. I thought we were uh, uh, Paul Westhead from Loyola Marymount with a basketball team. You know, That's just right. everybody down, shoot and score, and th there was not a lot of defense played that game. This will be a third down situation here for Wake Forest Roseville. Here is Reyna at the 30, the 25, at the 20. He's got a first down as he's finally pushed out of bounds uh, inside the 20-yard uh, line. Looks to be at about the 19-yard line. And a first down for Wake Forest Roseville. And here's that uh, instant replay in the run again by Reyna. Well, we talked about making those adjustments, and uh, really, Broughton has not been able to do anything about Reyna running off the right side all night long. He's uh, found some uh, open space, and that's another first down for Wake Forest. We talked about this being a shootout, and uh, boy, it looks like it may just come down to who scores last yeah. in this one. Who's got the last possession? You're right, Paul. There's the first down run, and this is going to be up the middle. This is Kramer, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Wake Forest, Roseville. The Cougars come back as Kramer picks up a touchdown run of 19 yards. Kramer with his second touchdown run of the night. The first one of 11 yards, this one from 19 yards. And it looks like Wake Forest is going to set up to attempt a point after Caleb Epps is on the field. 7.05 to go. Our score is tied. This for the tiebreaker. Snap from center, the put down, the kick is blocked. Getting in there, number 40 for uh, Broughton, and that would be Tim Justice. Little guy, 5'9", 185, but he comes up with a big play, and our score is deadlock at 24. Well, Coach, while we've got you, uh, how about a quick preview for your basketball team? Of course, your athletic director, but also head basketball coach here as we take another look here at the uh, touchdown. Yeah, we, uh, we had a really good summer with our kids. We went to the University of South Carolina to Dave Odom's basketball camp, and uh, our kids did a fantastic job. There was about 90-some teams from all around the area down there, uh, from Florida all the way to uh, Tennessee, on up into North Carolina, Virginia, we're down there. And uh, we, we participated real well. We were 10-2 and two at that team camp. We lost two games by one point each. And uh, then we came back and played in a NCHSA uh, sanctioned, NCAA, excuse me, NCAA sanctioned uh, basketball tournament at Chapel Hill and East Chapel Hill High School. And we finished third out of 19 teams there. And then we played in the summer league this summer. And we're five and zero. Oh, we were undefeated there, so we're 18 and uh, five for the summer. But uh, kids have worked really, really hard. I'm real excited. And I'm encouraging all the Wake Forest faithfuls to come out and watch our basketball team this this winter. Coach, got anybody that uh, we've been announcing here tonight on the football team that we'll see on the basketball court? Um, yeah, we've got uh, uh, Charles uh, Farrell. He is. Uh, He's played uh, in our program and also uh, a young man that, that quarterbacks on the JV and I think they brought him up tonight is uh, Tim Hartman. I don't know if, he, if, if Tim's been in the game yet tonight, but uh, he's our uh, junior varsity uh, quarterback. And we also have another young man by the name of Kevin Hartsfield. And those three have been involved in our program and we look forward to them having a real successful run in the, in the football playoffs and hopefully that they'll, they'll help us in the, in the winter when they get out there. First down and 10, Broughton at their own 21 after Lamar Scott was rocked by Jordan Kramer on the kick return. Uh, it'll be first down and 10, and on that first down play, the pass uh, incomplete, so it will be uh, second down. Um, 
name some of the guys that uh, we'll see uh, maybe not I mean, we just talked about football players that play basketball but uh, some of your leading returners this year we had a uh, our leading scorer will be back he'll be a senior this year his name is TJ Holman he's a phenomenal athlete he's done a great job for us he Unfortunately, the last three years he ha he's had to play our center spot at about six feet in height. But uh, mm. this this year we have Ernest Bridges, who broke his foot last year at the first of uh, right before the first game. Oh, and here's Sedaris Wright faking at the 40s, at the 30, the 20, the 15, 10, 5, and touchdown. Sedarius Wright hooks up with Josh Price once again, and this one goes 79 yards for the score and Price was hit right as he threw that ball and he got it up in the air and Sedarius Wright had a few yards on the uh, defensive back and then he used his speed and athleticism to get down the field in a hurry. And once again, we were talking about it uh, all night long. There's been man coverage for Josh Price. He's found Sedaris Wright a couple of times. And that time, finally, the Wake Forest defense giving up the run after the catch. And uh, Sedaris Wright heads into the end zone. Here's the uh, extra point attempt. It's up, and it is good. And Broughton with that seven-point lead, 31-24. to And they come right back and strike. 31 now to 24 on that 79-yard pass play from Josh Price to Sidarius Wright. Look at the pressure. He looked like he just threw that as hard as he could before he got hit. And he's done a terrific job uh, throwing the ball in the face of that pressure. Way far as just a half step behind getting those sacks and those, uh, and even the hurries though, look uh, uh, look like they're not bothering Josh Price too much. And Sidarius Wright able to make a little move, as you said, Greg, and uh, does the rest himself. You said, uh, you know, reminded you of Daniel Evans' great poise, and we saw that uh, last night in the win. Uh, NC State over Florida State, Daniel Evans with uh, uh, great poise. So what's it mean, uh, uh, Chuck? I know you've been in this area for a while, and, and uh, you've seen a lot of high school quarterbacks come out of this area and, and go on to uh, play at the Division I level. But uh, 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 what does that mean, I mean for you and other uh, I mean, coaches, athletic directors in this area, to see somebody locally go on to Division I and, and do really well in there in his first two games? Oh, yeah. It's... It's, it's a real special conference that we play in. The Cap 7 is tough in just about every sport. And uh, with the basketball and also with uh, the football, uh, the soccer program, all the programs in the, in, in the Cap 7 are real special. And a lot of uh, student athletes have come out and been very successful. There was a, a, uh, a run there where we had, I think, seven kids in the ACC playing basketball. Uh, Millbrook had a couple. Broughton had uh, Shavlik Randolph. We had uh, uh, Anthony Her Richardson from right, Leesville Anthony Road. Right, Anthony Richardson from Leesville Road. Um, uh, Eric Williams from Wake Forest. And yep. I also have another young man that's over at State playing, Brian Neiman. He'll be a senior this year. But uh, that is extremely gives, you know, I mean, it just so much clout to the conference when you got kids that can go off and play on that level because there's not any better basketball. Uh, in the country than the ACC, and uh, we had seven kids playing at one time in, in, in the in the ACC. So that was that kind of gives you an idea. And with Daniel uh, going on and having so much success, and there's been some other kids from Millbrook that have played at Notre Dame and, and some of the other schools. Earl's had some great players that have uh, gone on and played on the college level from Millbrook. A tough conference, and once again. Uh, uh, another tough conference in football this year uh, with teams kind of beating each other up. Uh, Kosanke will uh, run this one on the left hand after a five-yard illegal procedure penalty. And uh, not much there for Robert Kosanke, so it'll be second down and uh, 15 to go. Here's the uh, instant replay here. Anything, Coach, that uh, you guys are working on here at the school, uh, improvements, enhancements you want to... Um, let us know about well one thing we've been trying to do is uh, our school is so landlocked uh, you know we've grown from a, a small 2a school over the last 25 years into where we're a fairly big 4a school we, we got close to 2,000 students on this campus and at one time when I came here uh, about 27 years ago we had a, a population of about 
the, the entire population of the campus is about 500 students. So what's happened to us is we don't have the real estate here, and when we, we've had to build, you know, add additions to the campus and that, we don't have a practice field that is, you know, conducive to us to run a 4A high school program. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get an artificial surface uh, turf in this stadium. And, uh, and I've been working with uh, some people. St. Lawrence Holmes, Bob Ullman has uh, given me some people's names that have been very, very helpful in uh, uh, introducing us to certain types of turf. And uh, I just got to come up with a funding source, and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be able to do that. But we're, we're still working real hard to get artificial turf in our state, and that's our next big goal. If we could do that, we would have, obviously, uh, the finest stadium around, especially in this area for high school sports. Sounds great. Sounds terrific. Here's the punting situation now. It's Robert Kosenke, and this uh, punt actually finally <laughs> not being able to uh, get kicked away there. Uh, it looked like it was a bad snap from center, and number four, Caleb Epps, tried to come over and kick this one away, and uh, it was immediately recovered there by Patrick Campbell for the Broughton Capitals and the Caps in business here uh, at the 31-yard uh, line. So you have a bad snap from center and uh, Epps alertly trying to go get it and then it was picked up there by uh, Broughton's uh, number five or excuse me, uh, number five Patrick uh, Campbell who comes over and recovers that. Coach, thank you so much for Greg, stopping by thank and, and, for having and me uh, up hanging here. out with us here uh, in the I third quarter. We appreciate it. You guys do a great job. You guys are both pros at this. And, uh, well, we, we try I feel like best. I'm at ESPN, <laughs> I'll tell you. It's very, very special. And we really appreciate you all, everything you do, and what you do for high school sport in this particular area is uh, uh, it is so much needed, and you guys just really, really emphasize the high school student-athlete piece, and uh, we, we appreciate it. Thanks, thank Greg. Thank you very Thanks, much. Bob, very we much. appreciate okay. being here, and uh, thank you very much for uh, setting us up with a nice area here in the uh, press box, and that's uh, Coach Chuck Hess, athletic director here at uh, Wake Forest Roseville High School and also uh, head coach of the uh, men's basketball team. The rain still falling here from the sky, and also the uh, pass is still falling uh, from the air. Uh, for the uh, Broughton Capitals as uh, they, as the rain comes down even more, moving into territory. They're at the 30-yard uh, line. First, second down and 10 as the first pass was incomplete. And on second down, Price gets pressure up the middle. He still gets this one underway to Sidarius Wright, but it's short and incomplete. And so it is third down now for Josh Price as they got the uh, punt. And there you see some... Uh, Fans in attendance trying to hide from the rain falling here at Trentini Stadium. You know, to my mind, this looks like uh, the first real break for Broughton tonight, uh, getting that block punt That's and right. getting the short field. And Wade Forest uh, having trouble stopping this attack all night long, but this is a key uh, series for the Wade Forest defense with 4.25 or so to go here in the third quarter to get a big stop here. Uh, once again, uh, there's a, there's a lot of distance in their field goal unit, but uh, even Jeremy Shelley is going to, you know, uh, benefit from a little bit better field position. And Broughton, uh, now it looks like they're moving to chains. Were you able to pick that up? I wasn't... Uh, I was not. I was not able to pick up a flag, but uh, I guess... Uh, Saw the throw over the middle, and it was incomplete. Yeah, not sure why... Must have been a personal foul, maybe a late hit on the quarterback is the only thing I can think of because I know he did get rushed up the middle and got that pass underway just before he was hit. So it's first down and 10 for Broughton now at the 15-yard line of Wake Forest Roseville. Price dropping back to pass, slings it down to the goal line, touchdown! Number 21, Torres Sanders uh, picking up that uh, touchdown pass of uh, 15 yards. And uh, now 14, well, actually 13 with the uh, extra point uh, pending. Uh, 14 unanswered points here for the uh, Broughton Capitals. And then we'll call that the second big break then, the uh, blocked punt and then that penalty uh, to, uh, to give them a first down situation instead of that third and 10. As uh, once again, Shelley is on to attempt the point after, and that one has uh, been good. 
And so they stretch it out to 14, 38 to 24 is the score. And as you say, with the, with the rain falling, starting to put a little bit of a damper on uh, homecoming here at Wake Forest. Although, in the way this thing has been going, I don't know where it's going to end. I think uh, we, could, we, could see, uh, we could see an incredible score by the time this one is over as we take another look at it. And a pass over the middle, this time wide open. And uh, Torres Sanders picking up six points. So homecoming night, a lot of rain and uh, a lot of passing yards here for the uh, Broughton Capitals as that one goes uh, 15 yards after they get the uh, bad snap on the punt, the fumble recovery. Both teams now have gotten scores off of uh, punts that either a bad punt or now a bad snap off a punt. So I guess you could call that like a turnover. We've had very few, if any, turnovers uh, here tonight in this ballgame. 4.20 to go, third quarter, and Broughton now with what appears to be a commanding 38-24 lead here with 4.20 to go, but you never can tell. Wake Forest Royals Rollsville likes to keep it on the ground, and they have been able to chew up some big yardage on the ground. This will be a key drive for the Cougars to see if they can get back into this ballgame with a scoring drive. Denzel Reina, number three, Waiting back for this kickoff. The kickoffs haven't been very deep here for Shelley. He puts his right foot into it this time, and it is taken at the 18-yard line by Burton White. Burton White up the middle, 30, 35, 40, and White all the way up to the 46-yard line. So a good run back and a spark, maybe, to get the offense going. Maybe well, the spark they need to kind of turn things around. That's right. In this game, you mentioned a potentially commanding lead. I don't know if 14 points is going to be commanding in this one. As, uh, the, the, the lead has changed a couple of times that way. But uh, as you say, a nice spark there. It got the crowd back into it. Good and tackle by Jeremy Shelley. Great the tackle kicker. there by the kicker who said, hey, you may have to run me over, but I'm going to make you hit the ground. And uh, Wade Forrest on first and 10 is going to get uh, stuffed. Number 50, Matt Taylor and Matt Schuster. It's the Matt attack, and they take him down to the ground for no gain on the play. The last couple of runs for Jordan Kramer up the middle, have, there's been nothing there, nothing available. And so a loss of a yard, they call it second down now in 11. With time winding down here in the third quarter, and we want to remind people we'll be picking our St. Lawrence Holmes Game of the Week Players of the Game. Brought to you by Capital Bank. Coming up following this game. Brandon Davis now underneath center. And we'll hand off. This is Reyna, 40-45. Reyna up to the 49. And he will be stopped shy of a first down by about three or four yards. Earl Smith. And his offensive coordinator there flanked to his right. Calling the shots here and trying to get their team a first down. Well, we heard this week that Brandon Davis and the air attack had started to emerge for Wake Forest. That's right. But there's just no real reason to uh, to risk it right now as they are able to move the football. It's very interesting. You know, this is a uh, uh, a ground-controlling running attack. Broughton with that left-right uh, passing attack doing almost the same thing with their with their passing as uh, Cassanti is going to take at that time. He breaks a tackle and gets across the 50 and down to about the 47-yard line where he is going to be close to a first down for the Cougars. I want to remind everybody, too, next week we will be on the road again here in the Camp 7 Conference as the Wake Forest Roseville Cougars try to maintain the winning streak or bounce back from a loss. All depends on what happens here tonight. They will be on the road to take the, on the Wakefield Wolverines. That will be from Wakefield High School, St. Lawrence Holmes Game of the Week next Friday night. Here is the quarterback sneak by Brandon Davis, I believe, up the middle. He is pushed back by the Broughton defensive front, and I don't know if he got the first down. Well, the officials got his foot <laughs> very close. Uh, you know how that is, is that initial surge is what they're going to go by, and uh, that looks like they're going to... Well, first I thought they were going to bring the chains out for a measurement, and then uh, some players started to get excited, but uh, as I say, it's all going to depend upon the spot of this one, of course, but... It is possible that he got it. Looks like they are going to bring the chains out now. We'll bring the chains out. we got time to remind everybody about high-definition TV. You know, if you plan to purchase an HD TV, then you can get an HD box 
with the package and the price is the same. Uh, plus, you have a ton of programming and high def. Uh, high definition television is service of digital cable at Time Warner Cable. It's uh, part of the all best package. You can take it to the next level with the digital cable. Get over 180 digital channels. Uh, high definition. Also, easy to use interactive programming guide, parental controls, movies on demand, and interactive services. All part of Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Well, as we get back to action, it is a first down for the Wake Forest Roseville Cougars. And on first down, it's a pitch and a run of that right. Raina is able to uh, bounce off of one tackler and get down inside the 45, down to about the 44. So a pickup of a couple there. Well, what can you say? The uh, the crowd fired up as the Cougars get that first down and then go back to Reyna once again. And as we've been saying, Broughton not able to find a way to stop that run off the right side. And Wake Forest continues to move the ball effectively on the ground. The time is winding down. Reyna down to the 40. Another gain of about three on this run. But it's going to be third down and call it four. No need to uh, panic, though. Still plenty of time in the ball game. Now we're under a minute to go here in the third. The third quarter, which saw Wake Forest Roseville come out and strike with a touchdown, but they were only able to get six points. The uh, extra point attempt was blocked, and they tied it up. But since then, 14 unanswered by Broughton. Here's a run up the middle by Kramer, and he has been finding it tough to run up the middle. It's uh, big number 78. Uh, for uh, Broughton, Chris Satterwhite, he's 6'1", 225, in there to plug up that hole. And so, they're actually not even going to give him a yard. Then they gave him a half a yard. So it's going to be fourth down and still about four yards to go for the Cougars, just inside the 40. And they will be going for it here as time winds down. This will be the last play of the, th of the third quarter. Davis will roll to the left. He flips it out. Incomplete. Just a little flip pass and just a little too far for Jordan Kramer. And so on fourth down, Broughton will get the ball back with 5.4 seconds to go here in the third. So Brandon Davis working out of the play action, hoping that he can lead Jordan Kramer. And uh, Kramer actually was short of the first down on that pass play. And uh, Wake Forest is going to come up short. Broughton will take over. 5.4 seconds left to go in the third quarter. You said there's not, not any reason to panic, but boy, the Wake Forest defense is going to have to get some stops starting with this drive. Drive starts for Broughton first and 10 at the 40-yard uh, line. Josh Price back in. He's uh, thrown for a number of touchdowns already here tonight. Said Spencer Terry in motion to the right side. And he will drop back to pass on first down. And he is hit hard and brought down. A sack by number 10, Brian Phillips, a linebacker, six foot junior, 190 pounds. And Phillips comes in and gets the sack. A uh, big sack here uh, for the uh, Wake Forest Roseville Cougars. And that'll end the third quarter at the end of three on uh, St. Lawrence Holmes High School Football Game of the Week. Brock Capitals lead 38 to 24. The fourth quarter is coming up next after this. At St. Lawrence Homes, we give you the best of all worlds. We're a local builder that's large enough to offer you the advantages of both price and quality while providing dependable service and custom quality features in our homes. You'll find we offer you much more for your money. More square footage, innovative designs, and standard features that other builders consider expensive upgrades. St. Lawrence Homes. Thoughtfully designed. Carefully crafted. Perfectly located. Wish you could wake up in a new place with a new career? You can! Why not take a look into an affiliate of Le Cordon Bleu Schools North America? You can get a fresh start in a fresh city in the in-demand culinary industry. You could have fun working at restaurants, hotels, and resorts in some of the best cities in the world. Call now for a complimentary brochure. Operators are standing by. Call toll-free 800-761-0593. Call now.
We are finished with three quarters of play here in Cap 7 football. Uh, the St. Lawrence Holmes Friday Night High School Game of the Week. The rain continues to fall here at Trentini Stadium in Wake Forest, North Carolina. And our guys are working hard on the sidelines trying to protect them, our equipment. But uh, it's been a game tonight that we've been able to bring to you and with one quarter of play to go, the Broughton Caps lead by the score of 38 to 24. And here's Spencer Terry taking it down the right sidelines to the 20 to the 15. And he is out of bounds as he is brought down out of bounds by uh, number 12, Taylor Kiker. Or excuse me, uh, Charles Farrell, a 6'2 junior, 185 pounds. But Terry, his biggest run of the night as we uh, start the fourth quarter here after the timeout. A big run that uh, really... That could be a big, big... Well, you know, Broughton's used that misdirection a couple of times to set up the pass. That time, they fake it to Sedaris Wright. They hand it off to Spencer Terry, and he, man, he really does the rest. And that is a big play for Broughton. It puts them now into the red zone. They have it first down and 10 at the Wake Forest Roseville 17 and a chance to put this game out of reach here as we begin the fourth quarter. Wright in motion. Handoff Terry at the 15, and he gets down to about the 14. If the Caps score here, it'll be tough to come back for the Cougars. They have it at the 14. And the crowd here at homecoming getting taking it to another level in terms of getting fired up for this as uh, some of the guys from the student section have joined a cheerleading squad down there. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun here at homecoming. Second down and call it seven. Right in motion, whistles. And the Broughton Caps want a timeout. And this uh, timeout on the field will enable us to uh, tell you about Gregory Pools. Uh, of course, we need power to uh, bring you these games uh, here tonight from uh, Wake Forest uh, High School and all the other high schools that we have been to this season. And uh, tonight's generator provided courtesy of Gregory Pool Power Systems. For power when you need it most, it's Gregory Pool. I'd like to thank them for joining us and being a, far, a proud sponsor of high school uh, football games right here on Time Warner Cable. So, Gregory Pool providing tonight's power here on the St. Lawrence Holmes Friday night game of the week. So, timeout on the field. 11.03 to go here in the ball game. Broughton with the ball and a 38-24 to 24 lead. Spirit personified here <laughs> down below. I guess it's not that cold. Well, hopefully they can transfer some of that to the Wake Forest defense as they are pinned back here on second down. Here comes Broughton. And Price back to pass, looking for Wright, but Wright hadn't gotten into his passing uh, formation. I believe Price just kind of laid it out there incomplete. So it'll be third down. And seven to go for Broughton. You know, we've seen Sidarius Wright line up as the quarterback uh, in that uh, backfield and has just taken a snap from center and ran it himself. But it's kind of interesting is that wing tee, especially on a run, uh, you know, they use that misdirection all the time here. Broughton doing a good job of mixing it up with their fakes. That time unable to hit Sidarius Wright. And uh, once again, play action, looking over the middle. Incomplete intended there, beautifully defended uh, by a Wake Forest, number 23, Jeff Johnson, and intended for Torres Sanders. So coming out should be the field goal unit. Here's the uh, replay here. Well, after that big run by Spencer Terry, Broughton gets shut down here, but they do bring the field goal unit out, and as you said, another score is going to make it awfully difficult for Wake Forest. From 21 yards out, or excuse me, 31 yards out, and the kick is good as he chipped that one up and over the crossbar. And our score now, Broughton 41 and Wake Forest Roseville 24.
Well, Greg, it looks like Wade Forrest, uh, barring a great comeback here, is uh, going to head to Wayfield. A uh, one and one in the cap seven. Wayfield is going to play on a short week because their game against Leesville Road tonight was postponed. And they're going to play on Monday night. As we get another look at it, Jeremy Shelley adding that dimension. Not that many schools, even at this level, have uh, a solid field goal kicker uh, and the ability to score points. Somewhat at will, we heard head coach Chris Martin telling us that uh, inside, what, the 25 or so, uh, mm -hmm. he knows he's got it, just as Wayfield feels that way about Bryson Rose. Uh, Jeremy Shelley uh, doing it for Broughton tonight. A lot of extra points and a couple of field goals tonight, too. He's hit from uh, 31 yards uh, tonight. And he's uh, hit from 37 yards. A lot of scoring here tonight. 41-24 for the Caps. Seemingly in control, but anything can happen. 10.49 to go, and here comes the kick. Shelley will boot this one down, and it is taken at the uh, 10 by White, and he hands it off to Reyna at the 20, and he fumbles the ball. It's loose, and it is picked back up. The keen sense there of uh, Brian Phillips. And he jumps on that ball to get it back for Wake Forest Roseville. So the Cougars with possession here now in the fourth quarter. With time winding down, and here's the uh, replay. Well, I don't know how many times I've said it uh, broadcasting high school sports. Well, you know, things look like they're in control. And uh, here's a little reverse on that uh, on that run back. And if Reyna breaks a tackle there, of course, he does fumble it at the end of the play. But if he breaks a tackle there, he might have had a lane down the left side, and uh, we could be looking at a way for us touchdown. Here's the pass over the middle, complete 40, 45, up to the 47-yard line and a first down as the throw is complete to number 83, Matt Davidson, the tight end, a junior, 6-foot, 185-pounder. And here's just a short drop-back pass by Davis and the throw over to the open Davis. Well, as we said, we haven't had uh, Brandon Davis having to sh uh, show what he can do. We've heard the last couple of weeks that he's really opened up the air attack, but he's going to have to do it now as uh, Wade Forrest finds himself down in this one. Hand off Reyna, and he's uh, got li very little running room. He's trying to make something out of nothing there, and he's able to pick up a few yards up close to the midfield line. But it'll be a gain of about, uh, well, call it a couple. Call it second down and eight. Yeah, Got to keep the defense honest. That's right. right. Well, you're right. And, I, and, boy, they've been so successful running to the right uh, all night long. So why not do it again? But on second down and long, it could be and should be, I think, a passing situation. Kramer tries one up the middle and nothing there. Boy, they've been tough here tonight on Jordan Kramer in the second half. That's something that they've done well is stop him. Matt Taylor was there on the play along with uh, number 90, Matt Scarborough, the defensive lineman, 6'2", 210 pounds. The defense has done a real good job in the second half, and the offense, of course, helping out the defense with uh, maintaining possession of the ball and keeping the ball away from Brandon Davis. And on third down and long, you know, Wake Forest got their work cut out. Although, as we could say, anything can happen here. Nine minutes left to play. But uh, this is a key, key situation. As Rain is going to run to his right. He's going to cut it up the field. Got some running room. 35-40. Four, excuse me, 30-20, 15-10. And he's all the way down to the five-yard line. So Denzel Reyna from the 48. And he brings it all the way down to the five. Big run by Denzel Reyna. He's had a couple of big runs here tonight, and that helps Wake Forest Roseville get into scoring position. And here's the instant replay. And boy, anything can happen indeed, huh? They run to the right, and this time he cuts it back up the field. And look at him run. He's going to... He's going to continue and break that tackle. And boy, I bet he was thinking about a touchdown there. And now we've got flags down here as we start out on this uh, set of downs. And it will be a five-yard pe penalty called against Wake Forest Roseville for illegal motion. So they'll back him up five yards, and it will be uh, second down, or first down and goal from the 10-yard line. 
know, we talk about it every single week. We've mentioned it a couple of times tonight. It's homecoming here at Wake Forest, and people are here in the rain. It's a cold night, and we encourage everybody to head out to enjoy high school sports live and in person. Davis will throw. He's got a man at the end zone. Incomplete. Threw it just a little too far for Robert Kosenke. Kosenke with a touchdown already tonight. So it'll be second down and goal from about the 10-yard line. And that time Davis is going to go, he's going to fake it on play action to right end and fire for the end zone. And, uh, you know, he had Kosenke back there, and a perfect throw perhaps might have gotten it to him. But uh, I was looking at another wide out there to the left that was running to the corner of the end zone. Not sure if he could have gotten it there or not. Here's the uh, second down, Kramer. Kramer at the five. Kramer at the two. He's at the one. Touchdown. So they were able to hold Jordan Kramer up a little bit here in the third and fourth uh, quarters, but uh, Jordan Kramer returning to the form that he showed in the first half, breaking some tackles at the line of scrimmage. That's his third score of the night. Ten-yard power run by Jordan Kramer. Here's the extra point attempt now. Caleb Epps in to attempt it. They've had a rough time with the extra points. This is an important one to cut it to within 10. And a bad snap. Ryan Phillips is running, and he will fumble the ball out of bounds, and that'll be the end. So the kick, no good. With 8.29 to go, our score, Broughton 41, and Wake Forest Roseville 30. So they cut the lead to 11. Well, we're going to get another look at it here as Kramer gets uh, his third touchdown of the night. And as I say, he's going to he's going to get bumped at the line of scrimmage and brush that off and break a couple of tackles and uh, take the caps into the end zone. 9.29 left to go here. We talked about it being a shootout, Greg, and uh, they're starting to shoot it again. So let's see what happens here. Just an 11-point lead for Broaden. Wake Forest is going to kick the ball off, and anything is a lot, a lot of time left. And so much more football to be played. Eight and a half minutes to go, 41-30. And here's the kickoff. It's the St. Lawrence Holmes High School Football Game of the Week. You can watch our high school football games every Friday night at 10.30 and Saturdays at 7. Here's the kickoff, and it will be taken at the 10. And running this kickoff is Lee Brown, 20-25, and he's up to about the 29-yard line. So now the Wake Forest Roseville defense needs to stiffen up and stop the uh, high-scoring passing attack of the Broughton Capitals. In order for them to try to get this win here on homecoming. So it's at the 29-yard line. First down in 10, Price with the lone setback, Spencer Terry. And in motion, Sedarius right. Price fumbles the ball, and he is able to jump on it. Oh, my. That was some trouble there. Price is able to get it back, but that could have been trouble, and Wake Forest could have been back in business. And so few mistakes, really, by Broughton's offense tonight. That's... Uh that's not a good time, perhaps, to have trouble with the snap, but let's see if we, uh, we Forest's defense, rather, can take advantage. Josh Price falls on that and prevents the fumble, but it's second down and a long way to go. Second down and 15 on the five-yard loss. 7.45 and counting to go in our football game. Right. Oh, now there's a fumble, and Wake Forest rolls. Well, I think, has it back. They do. Let's see who picked up this fumble. Looks like number 34 was there for Wake Forest Roseville, and that's Andre Thomas. The nose tackle, senior on homecoming, comes up with a big play as they just fumbled the previous snap, and on this one, Sidarius Wright running behind the center and got in the middle of that snap. 
Well, what a big, big, big play for the Wake Forest defense. Once again, this sturdy crowd is uh, fired up, and they're behind their offense. There's a fumble snap, but Davis gets it back. He rolls to his left, looking downfield, and there's not much there. He'll tuck it and run down to about the 16-yard line. The ball going uh, out of bounds, stopping the clock uh, with 7 minutes and 30 seconds to go. An 11 point Broughton lead, but hold everything. The Cougars in business here at the 17. And here's a run. This is Kosenki, 15. Kosenki at the 10. He's at the 5, and he is hauled out of bounds at about the 4 yard line. First down, Wake Forest Roseville. With seven and a half minutes to go, but a chance to get this thing even closer after the fumble recovery. And here's Kosenki. And they're going to send the fullback up the middle, fake it to him, and hand it to Kosenki. He'll run to his left. And he's given Wake Forest a first and goal. Still plenty of time, 7.22. And here's Denzel Reyna, and he will lose yardage as he tries to run off the right side. But good penetration there. In on the play for a Broughton number 58, Rayvon Stanback, and also number 90, Matt Scarborough. Good defenders that have been there on a lot of occasions here tonight. So it's second down and goal from the six-yard line. And Still. down by 11, this is a situation where they almost have to get a touchdown. If, they, right. if they settle for the field goal, then if they're going to even be able to tie it, they're going to have to score a touchdown and a two-point conversion. So Kramer getting to the five, and that's it. And wrapped up there on the play by uh, number 40. Tim Justice, also number 78, was there. Chris Satterwhite. And here's the replay. Had a hole, but it closed up quick. And it looked like Sal Valari, the linebacker, was there to uh, hit him the first time. So it's now third down and goal as the rain continues to fall here at Wake Forest Roseville High School. The Cougars trailing by 11 with 6.09 to go, and there's a timeout on the field. So with that timeout, we will take a break as well. Our score with uh, 6.09 to go, 41-30. Broughton with the lead. We'll take a timeout. Be right back after this. And back to action here on a third down run as we come back to action. A stuff by the Broughton defense and out coming on to attempt a field goal of uh, some 27 yards uh, will be Caleb Epps for Wake Forest as they're going to go for the field goal attempt. The put down, the kick is up. It is no good. So Wake Forest Roseville gets the fumble, Paul, but are unable to come up with any points, and that hurts. And even with that field goal, they would have been forced to score a touchdown and then make the two-point conversion even to tie this game. And that's assuming Broughton does uh, nothing further on offense. <laughs> and, uh, as we've seen, it's been tough to stop them tonight. So a tough third down situation before that on the play. And a good stop by the Broughton Capitals really helped out. And now on the missed field goal, they will get it first down in 10 at their own 20-yard line. And in control, leading by 11 with five and a half minutes to go. Sidarius right in motion. And this one will go to Spencer Terry and not much there. Taylor Fisher was there along with uh, number 90. Jeremy Davis, the nose tackle there for Wake Forest Roseville. I want to remind everybody that uh, you can watch high school football this game and all of our high school football games that we've done already this season on our high school sports channel high school sports on demand that's only on digital channel 524 for all of our digital cable customers and you can watch that just bring it up on your on demand channel and watch it anytime you want that's a courtesy of uh, time warner cable the power of you here's the uh, run up the middle and not much there from the 20 to the 21 uh, goes uh, Spencer Terry. So it'll be a third down situation here now with four and a half minutes to go in the game. 
And Wake Forest doing what they need to do here, which is uh, stifle this Broughton offense and try to get their offense, their own offense, another shot at it. But uh, third down and what? About nine and a half, almost ten to go. And Wake Forest needs another big stop here, and something certainly that's not going to run a lot of time off the clock and get some good field position off the point. So a lot to ask, I guess, in the next two plays. But uh, and they've had trouble uh, stopping this Broughton spread, and Josh Price has been effective from the shotgun. Four minutes now to go. They will send a man in motion to that right side. They will fake the handoff, and then they'll give it. No, actually, Price will take it. He will run it up to the 30-yard line, and he gets close to a Broughton first down. Boy, if he can get that first down, the Caps can take at least another couple minutes off this clock as they've taken uh, almost two minutes off the clock now with uh, a stoppage of play here with 3.51 to go. And are they giving it to him? Well, it looked like the... Uh the guys working the sticks there thought it was going to be an automatic first down, and now it looks like uh, they're going to signal it. So they brought him back for a second, and then <laughs> and they'll send him down the field. So uh, Josh Price doing it himself that time. His first run of the night, and it's a good one because he gets a first down. Oh, there's a little bit of a late hit there. A little after, yeah, I'd be wondering why, too. Where's the flag? No flag on that play. So the Caps have a new set of downs with 3.40 to go and an 11-point lead. First down and 10 from their own 30-yard line. I'm, con I'm sure they're content with just running the football. And Price will run it himself into the pile at the 30. And, of course, Wake Forest now hoping they can create a turnover. Broughton's going to stay out of the shotgun, as they, they always do. But uh, So they had a little bit of an adventure with a couple of snaps in the last series. But uh, Broughton, as you say, with a chance now to really run the clock. Josh Price, a fantastic night tonight. Price had a 9-yard uh, touchdown pass. He's had a 27-yard touchdown pass. 79 and 15. Here is a second down and 10, and he will hand off as he lined up underneath center, handed off to Spencer Terry, and Terry uh, gets up to about the uh, 35, and he will have it uh, second down, or excuse me, third down and about five. So four touchdown passes tonight for Josh Price. And don't forget we'll be picking our players of the game brought to you by Capital Bank. And the gift in the amount of $250 will be given each school's athletic department courtesy of Capital Bank. Forty-one to thirty. And here's Price handing off. Boy, he was hit as he handed off to Terry. And Terry breaks free. Midfield, 45-40. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. Touchdown, Spencer Terry. 65-yard touchdown run by Spencer Terry. Capping off a Broughton victory. Well, Wake Forest's only real chance was to create a turnover. And Spencer Terry, who's been doing it all year long, coming to Broughton, and this is senior year. And he strikes again for Broughton. And so it's great speed there. And here's a fake attempt, and Price will throw it into the end zone for a two-point conversion, and it is intercepted by Richard Cotton, and so the pass attempt at the two-point conversion uh, is no good. And so with a minute 55 to go, Broughton now leads by the score of 47 to 30, and there's Spencer Terry with his uh, touchdown run there of 65 yards. Terry has two touchdowns on tonight. Wow, what another terrific job by Spencer Terry. We had him a couple weeks ago in our game against Millbrook, and he did it almost all by himself on offense. Tonight, Josh Price doing a great job of mixing it up with a pair attack, mm -hmm. throwing loose short passes, the over-the-middle passes, and the deep balls, and uh, really taking advantage of uh, a lot of man-on-man -man coverage and the inability of the Wake Forest defensive line to put enough pressure on him. He was hurried a couple of times, surely, and he, but I think he was only sacked one time in this game. And uh, Wake Forest just a half step behind Josh Price uh, tonight, and uh, 
in this offensive shootout. It looks like Broughton is going to get the better of it with that 17-point lead. Just under two minutes left to go. It's like a wink and a roll that uh, Broughton was involved in a shootout this time on the winning end. Last week losing to uh, Leesville Road 46-38, but uh, tonight if the score holds right now, 47-30. We've seen lots of scoring here tonight in a rain-soaked football game. Here is the kickoff, and this one will just be a bouncer on the ground. And uh, Kosenke lets it roll at the 10. He goes actually back to the 5 to pick it up, and he runs up to about the 13. Again, we'd like to thank uh, the fine sponsors on the broadcast. One of them, of course, is GMC, engineered to the highest standard, and that is professional grade. And we'd like to thank GMC for uh, being a proud sponsor of high school football and high school athletics here on Time Warner Cable this season. Here's a Brandon Davis pass. It, it looks like it's caught outside the 35. Well, actually, he was out of bounds. But a nice pass there by Davis to uh, number 18, Justin Barbary. And just put his foot down, was not able to come up with that reception. Foot just out of bounds. So a minute 45 with the clock stopped and a 17 point Broughton lead. So don't forget St. Lawrence Holmes High School Football Game of the Week on the road again next week, not too far away with a game here on Time Warner Cable. The Wake Forest Roseville Cougars traveling to take on the Wakefield Wolverines. So now homecoming here tonight for Wake Forest Roseville. We're going to start seeing some homecoming games here as we wind down the end of the season and also special nights like senior night. But uh, that'll be a great football game. You know, the Red, uh, the Red River rivalry there between Oklahoma and Texas is this weekend. Not sure if this is as uh, rough and tumble, but it's going to be a big rivalry game between those two schools next Friday night. There's no question about it. I've said it many times. These, these kids go to elementary school and middle school together, and then they split up and go to the different high schools, and they, they all know each other, and uh, it's, a, it's a great rivalry. Davis going to keep it himself. He's at the 20. And he gets up to about the 24 before he's punished there by a couple of Broughton Capital players, including Chris Pope, number 73 in there. But Davis does pick up the first down, so the clock will stop as they move the chains with uh, just under a minute and a half to go. But we thought we might see more of this earlier in the game. Brandon Davis, you know, operating more of a pass attack. That time, of course, he kept it himself, but uh, he was looking down the field and couldn't find a receiver open. But uh, a little too late, perhaps, for the passing attack as time continues to run down. And here's a run by Kramer up the middle. 30 up to about the 34-yard line. Picks up about five yards. And it'll be a second down there. Now under a minute to go, and I believe... Content with just running out the uh, clock here. as these teams come back up to the uh, line of scrimmage. What a great crowd that was in attendance here tonight. They've uh, set the standard here. And a fumble in the backfield is a uh, mix-up there between the handoff between Kosenke and uh, looks like uh, number 18 there, Barbie, Justin Barbie. And so it'll uh, back him up a couple of yards and it'll be third down and about eight. And that looks to be the final play of the game. 15 seconds, 14, 13. Game which saw Wake Forest Roseville come out to a 12 to nothing lead. Broughton would come right back. The lead would change hands a few more times, but it was uh, Broughton's 14 unanswered points, actually 17 unanswered points here in the uh, second half after Wake Forest Roseville tied it up to start the uh, third quarter at 24 apiece. Broughton came back with 17 unanswered, and they win here tonight by the final of 47 to 30. That's our final score. The Caps now move to 5-3 and three on the season, but uh, more importantly, 2-1 and one in the conference. And uh, Wake Forest Roseville drops to 3-4 and four overall, and 1-1 uh, one and one in the conference, so only 1-1. One
in the conference. So a loss here at homecoming hurts, but uh, not that hurtful. Still bounce back next week when they take on the Wakefield Wolverines. And of course, we'll have that game for you right here on Time Warner Cable. So that's the final. It's the Friday night St. Lawrence home high school football game of the week exclusively here on Time Warner Cable. The final brought in 47, Wake Forest 30. Coming up, the post-game show. Also, we'll be picking our players of the game from Capital Bank. Coming up next.